Hey, 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 how's it going? Good evening, everybody. Well, not everybody yet, but a couple of you. Hey, Kelly. All right. Let's jump into it. Uh, so, like I was saying, uh, I was saying on the page earlier, if you saw the post, um, tonight we are uh, continuing along the main story progression. Uh, and there are some interesting things having to do with, uh, with mind control and how that works and different ways in which it works. Because there are... Uh, there, in even just in this particular game, um, even just this game of the series, there are two ways uh, that mind control sort of works, uh, and they work very, very differently, and they have very different uh, implications for uh, <clears throat> for personal responsibility, for action theory, for for all of that. Uh, so it's going to tie in with uh, with some of the stuff that uh, that I talked about in the previous uh, the last uh, video lecture about SCOTUS, but the, the systemic principle, um, and then also uh, it'll have uh, some to do with the uh, the next thing that I'm going the next probably series of videos that I'm going to be posting, which are going to be our um, our philosophy reading group. Uh, that is going to be. Um, also from SCOTUS this time, uh, a lot of the same stuff that is that I mentioned in that video, uh, but looking at it um, in depth, very carefully, going through little bit by little bit, um, still working on uh, prep stuff for it, um, but hopefully that should be done uh, within the next uh, next few days, give or take, um, and uh, those will those will be gradually coming out as we go. All right, so let's see. So where we're at. I think that was a the last thing we did um, was with the Batarian terrorists. Now that was a DLC mission, so I don't think there is anything more to talk to our companions about. But um, if there is, it'll be Joker. So let's see what he has to say before we move on. <clears throat> and if Joker doesn't have anything to say, that Commander, means nobody will. Something you need. Uh, I'd like to know my crew. Mind if I ask you a few questions? <laughs> I can see where this is going. You oh, we already did this. Top okay. Class in flight school, I earned that. All those what are you talking about? You mean? Okay. okay. I, even with, with the we already made this awkward exchange happen, happen, so let's. Uh, all right. I have to go. Thanks, Joker. See you. <laughs> all right. See you. All right. So guess not. All right. Um, I didn't think so. I didn't. I, I suspected that for the DLC missions they didn't, uh, or I guess DLC mission there was only one for this game. Um, they didn't have uh, companion dialogue stuff. So that's that. Let's say bye bye to the Asgard system to Terra Nova. Ah, I'm dropping frames already. I'm realizing. Hopefully it is not too bad. I don't know what it is about Mass Effect in particular, but I uh, I just tend to have pretty bad luck when it comes to uh, to uh, frame dropping. Ooh, sound cut. That was my fault. Uh, let's check the other system first, see what's here. Message coming in. Patching it through. Normandy, this is Alliance Command. We're detecting your presence in the Attican Beta Cluster. One of our surveillance drones was gathering intel on Geth activities in the region when it was spotted and shot down. You need to go groundside and recover the drone's data module before the Geth find it. Oh, does he mean here? Interesting. Um, I don't remember this at all, so let's, uh, okay. Look through this, uh, this, oh, I think it's here. Okay. Uh, so yeah, Elatania. 
Neat. So let's uh, go here, because I think I think what he was talking about is here. So let's take a look. Uh, meanwhile, if uh, if you guys do have, uh, let's take our besties. Cares they are. Uh, if we, if you guys do have uh, any questions about uh, about the stuff that I've been uh, I've been talking about in my videos lately, if uh, anything having to do with SCOTUS or Anselm or whatever, uh, feel free to ask. If anything in there wasn't was uh, was unclear at all, or I uh, need me to clarify or add anything to or, uh, anything like that, uh, feel free to let me know. Um, I will do my best to answer um, absent any notes or anything. Uh, I don't exactly have any. Uh, I don't have my. Um, I don't have the book open in front of me, obviously, so I can't really work off of quotes. Uh, but I do know the material well enough to uh, to, to to talk through anything that's uh, that stuck out to you in the uh, that stuck out to you in uh, in the video lecture uh, or any of the other stuff I've talked about for uh, for um, related stuff. Uh, so one of the things uh, as well that um, wow that was interesting. Um, so one of the things about uh, one of the things I want to talk about tonight um, is this issue of mind control right, and what this has to do with uh, how this sort of plays into uh, issues of personal freedom, uh, personal freedom in terms of uh, terms of action theory, right? Our uh, uh, the the freedom of the will or the will's freedom or uh, however you want to term it um, probably something else that I'm gonna mention as well the different terminology for free will and if it makes a difference ooh this this is gonna be fun I like this thing I think this is the thing I'm thinking of uh, before I do that I want to uh, before I check this thing out I want to talk about this really shortly um, this is a Prothean ruin <clears throat> so the um, Depending on how, uh, there we go. Depending on how uh, how freedom works, and then also how the various mind control sort of uh, things work, if you want to call, it, if you want to put it that way, um, it is uh, it has different implications for free will uh, because it could be that it it reconciles perfectly well with free will, and it is still, if your mind is under someone's control in, in one of these two ways that we're going to see tonight, uh, or at least have kind of mentioned tonight, uh, then it is uh, still... Uh, it's still... Oops. Um, then you're still free. You're still morally responsible, etc. Uh, or it could be possible that your your personhood is being mitigated and right it's not just that you're under someone's control it's that you are no longer there and your body is simply a puppet uh, and i think and i think i'll argue this point on that i think both of the methods that this game employs uh do retain some measure of personhood and moral responsibility uh, even when one is uh, sort of controlled by an outside force so we'll look at those once when they come up um one is having to do with the Reapers that we've already seen, and one is having to do with the creature in the thumbnail, uh, the one behind the Asari, uh, called the Thorian. So we're going to see both of those. First of all, though, let's look at this. Oh, I hope I really don't hope. I really hope I don't fail. Yeah, okay. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> this is a long one. So... Examining the strange Prothean artifact reveals a small, irregular slot on the underside of the surface. Remembering the strange trinket you received from the Asari consort on the Citadel, you pull it out and place it into the slot. The ball explodes in a brilliant flash of white light, momentarily blinding and disorienting you. Slowly, your senses return as you wake from a deep sleep. You are alone in the forest, though you're not far from the caves you share with the others of your tribe. There's a pain and a small lump in the back of your skull as if a chip of flint has been forced under the surface of your skin. Leaning on your bone-tipped spear for support, you, raise, you rise to your feet. A sound draws your attention upwards, where a strange creature hovers high above you. It's unlike the birds you hunt by the lake's edge. It has no head and no wings, yet somehow it flies. It is a beast of shining silver, hanging motionless in the sky like a cloud. You sense it is watching you, studying you. Raising a hairy fist, you shake your spear at it in anger. 
and the creature rises up quickly until it disappears from view. With a satisfied grunt, you make your way back to the caves with the rest of your tribe. You fall into the familiar patterns of life, the hunt for food, the struggle to claim and keep a mate, the battles against other tribes that would claim your territory. Days roll into nights and back into days. Each time you rise from sleep, there is the sensation that you're not alone, that some other is with you sharing all you see, hear, and feel. At these times, your hand goes to the strange lump at the back of your skull, and you remember the silver creature in the sky. The air grows colder, winter falls. You must range farther for food, clutching the furs tight against you to ward off the chill. It is on one of these long hunts that the strange bird returns. You hear it before you see it, its call a deafening roar as it descends from above, swooping down on you. A single great eye opens on the underbelly, a glowing red orb. You try to run, but a finger of red light extends from the eye and engulfs you, and all goes black again. You wake an instant later to find yourself on Elitania, lying on your back, the Prothean artifact looming above you undamaged and your companions standing over you. They help you to your feet, puzzled. Was there a flash of light and you just sort of... There was a flash of light and you just sort of toppled over, one explains. Are you okay, Shepard? The other asks. I, I, the dialogue's the same no matter who's with you, but I assume this is Garrus and Liara, respectively. You don't answer right away, wondering at the implications of what you've seen. The memories of a Cro-Magnon hunter, captured by, by an implanted Prothean data recorder. How long did they study the primitive humans, observing them and analyzing the results at their base on Mars? And what, if anything, did they learn from us? I'm fine, you finally reply. Realizing this is a mystery you will probably never solve. Forget about it. Ancient aliens confirmed, guys. Um... <laughs> Now, I mean, admittedly, not like this entire series is not exclusively about ancient aliens uh, and everything related to that whole uh, to that whole theory and that whole idea, um, with the whole you know precursor race and cycles upon cycles of precursor races and all that. Um, but I love how they implement this in terms of, uh, including later on, of Protheans watching the primitive people of their cycle, uh, and while this is. Uh, Kind of a little bit of a spoiler, not really. Uh, the Protheans even wind up um, helping to, uh, at least in the first stages of uplifting uh, the Asari, and sort of guide Asari evolution and Asari cultural development and all of that. Uh-oh. Flip. There we go. Hey, Wizkid. Uh, Wizkid, you walked into a, uh, a narrative description of, uh, of Protheans abducting pre, uh, pre-literate, pre-social humans, Cro-Magnons, I guess, uh, and a recording of it, basically a, uh, a, a neural interface recording of it. So this is the, this is the whole bit where we find out that the Protheans had actually been watching humanity, f uh, near the end of their... Uh, near the end of their cycle, so roughly 50,000 years ago. Uh, so, you know, that's very early in the development of human society. The Protheans were around, apparently, um, poking around in, in primitive humans' heads. All right, so Kylie had a question, uh, and I'll kind of go back to it. Um, would hypnosis be an example of one's, uh, of one's will? And how that determines control of the mind. Uh, I say that with um, I say this because with hypnosis, one has to be open to being hypnotized; otherwise, it wouldn't work. Right. So hypnosis is something like you are uh, well. The person is who is hypnotized has to be an active participant in it. Right. Um, so it's not uh, it's not like hypnotism like you'd see in the movies or in comic books or whatever, where someone is absolutely utterly controlled. Um, by hypnotism, right? It's not like someone's will can be overtaken in that sense. Someone is still themselves, and they still have the uh, they still have to participate in it. It's just that through this sort of process of hypnosis, that the, the hypnotist sort of guides you through, um, rather than sort of does to you. Um, you are uh, you you have more immediate access to your subconscious. Let's put it that way, uh, and because of that, your conscious inhibitions sort of go down. Uh, I've seen hypnotism shows, like the comedy kind of hypnotism shows, and it's like it's it's basically like this. Um, 
it's people who are who are willing to go up and do this but but what that means is that they are ultimately willing to go up and kind of do whatever would happen on stage uh it's just uh they kind of go into a uh, i guess a dream state would be the best way uh the best way of describing it i think uh it's to the person hypnotized it's it's uh, i've Basically, I've heard it described as being like a dream. Like, you're you're there, and you're in control, but you're not of all of your right senses. You're, basically, your subconscious is in control. Um, ooh. Oh, no. Pijax. Forgot this is the planet with the stupid Pijax. Uh, so... Uh, I will get back to this idea about still being in the Prothean cycle, because that's there's a lot of interesting to that. Uh, but Wizkid says on, on being hypnotized, uh, he says, I've been hypnotized before. Cool. Um, uh, can absolutely confirm everything Vince is saying. You could say no, but you really just don't feel like it, right? So yeah, you. Th this is the reason why you sort of have to want to be hypnotized. And this ties in with a lot I've said elsewhere uh, about freedom of the will. Um uh first the first thing that comes to mind is uh is um stoicism uh and primarily uh, uh i did a lecture on stoicism as one of the earliest ones on my channel so check it out um because the stoics were uh were absolutists when it came to uh came to free will in a sense uh at least when it came to free will of what goes on in the mind that does not necessarily mean they came. They were absolutists with, about free will when it came to action. That's a separate question and one that they answered very carefully and differently. Different Stoics answered it different ways. Um, but yeah, the um, the Stoics held that anything that is internal to your mind, anything that you think, anything that is uh, that anything that is up to you, is the term Epictetus uses, an early Stoic. Um, that it is entirely up to you, and it is it is it cannot be. Drone, but where's the data module? Hmm. Pijax. Oh, this will be fun. No, it won't. Stop lying, Harris. Okay. Oh, there's a mineral over here, though. Um. So yeah, it's um. The uh, the stoic point. Having to do with uh, having to do with the same idea of, of hypnosis or mind control or ha what have you, is that you absolutely can be controlled by something outside of yourself. However, that is only possible if you, uh, in a sense, relinquish control. I'm gonna save really quick. I don't want to mess one of these up. Oops, I'm going to mess it up. No, I'm not. Okay, good. Um, so if you agree to be hypnotized, to kind of use that as our, as our illustration, kind of what you're doing is you're agreeing, you're, you're relinquishing control of your mind to an outside party, uh, to a third party, uh, to the, well, second party, technically, uh, to the person doing the hypnotism, the hypnotist. Yeah, that was redundant. Uh, but in that case, what you're doing is you are, you're still ultimately in control. It's just that in the moment, you aren't really. Uh, you aren't because what you've done is you've essentially relinquished control of your mind to somebody else, in a sense. You've, you've agreed. Um, all right, it's canon time. This is why you humans have such a violent reputation. Just wait until the next game when this is a mini game. Did I get it back or no? I can't actually tell. No, they're all dead. All right, well, they're not here. Also, Garrus should have an assault rifle for this. All right, next one. Uh, 
Anyway. Uh, so WizKid says that's definitely what it is. Like when I was hypnotized, I could have uh, I could have bowed out at any point, but one, I didn't really want to, um, and two, I was much much more open to suggestion, especially to be silly. Uh, yeah, and, and now the silly part is I assume this was part of like a comedy show, like a stage performance sort of thing, where silliness is kind of the goal, right? The goal is to to get you to do funny things that you ordinarily wouldn't under other circumstances. Um, the same though can be true uh, in like psych uh, in um, uh, therapeutic uses, like uh, psychological therapy using hypnosis, um, and it makes you more willing not to be silly, but more willing to um, to relive uh, or re-examine um, experiences in your memory, usually traumatic experiences that your conscious mind doesn't want to uh, doesn't want to access, doesn't want to touch, right? Um, and so that's why it's clinically useful. Um, and in that sense, it's actually, I mean, it's fairly obvious that it's not, uh, you know, mind control exactly. Uh, oh, I actually have to search them. I thought I could just murderate all of them, but I guess I probably should have checked them before I just started shooting all of them last time. Oh, well. They do give this species a name in the next game, which is why I'm referring to them as Pijax. Um, okay, it was for our senior all-night party. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, the times I've seen it were um, a like freshman orientation kind of thing when I first got to college, and then I think like one of our homecoming carnivals or something like that. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 uh, it's. Very much how you're describing is what I uh, is what I remember. And there you go. Um, but yeah, it's very much uh, the. It's very much um, that you make yourself susceptible. Right? You agree to relinquish control of yourself. So you're still ultimately in uh, in the in the more fundamental sense. You're still ultimately in control. Because you're the one who is saying that, uh, you're the one who is saying who is in control. Let's put it that way. Um, what is this? Light armor, silverback. I don't need Turian light armor, but there. Um, so you're the one who is saying who is in control, even if you're not immediately in control, right? You're not the one who is actually uh, in charge of your actions. Uh, and this will, I think, be somewhat similar to uh, one of the forms of mind control that we're going to wind up seeing. This quest, I, I will say, is taking way longer than I thought it would, but... Forgot about the stupid monkeys. That's battle music. Uh, so Wizkid says, the interesting part is that some of the people insisted they were faking it, uh, which in a sense they were, but I think uh, that I think that they were just embarrassed that it actually worked. Uh, yeah, you, you are faking it, right? So it's not like hypnosis is magic. It's not like it's a spell that someone casts on you and you're you're under their control. It's not like you can you see in um, It is a miracle the data module is still intact. Oh good. Your pilot should be able to relay right, the out of here. to your superiors. Um yeah, it's not like uh your <laughs> it's to put it in like D&D &D terms. It's not like you're failing a will save. Um why or Geth here. This is the most ridiculous. This is a very silly quest. Um, but yeah, it's not... Oh, gosh. Oh, Shepard's down. Let's try that again. I was not expecting that. Um... But yeah, in those terms, uh, oh, hey, Riley, didn't see him. Um, I don't think that it is a matter of, I mean, actually, I, I, let me put it this way. I do think that it's a matter of faking it in a sense, right? You are, really, right? You're not, uh, like I said, you're not like, to 
put it in D&D terms, you're not failing a will save against a charm person spell. No, you're, in a sense, agreeing to go along with... Um, you're agreeing to go along with what uh, somebody is telling you to do. Right. So it's so you're not uh, so you're not in that sense under their control in the uh, in the full sense. You're you're agreeing to go along with how someone says that you ought to act, right? Or, or what somebody says that you ought to do. It was here, not the other. One. They're both basically equidistant, so I'm going to go this way. Um. Right. So, yeah, I mean, hyp hypnotism is, again, it's something that, it's not something that, I think the, the best way of, of describing it, and this kind of, call it mind control if you want, is that it isn't something that someone does to you. It is something that you do as a rational and free agent. It's just you're putting yourself into a state of mind where you're open to suggestion. You're putting yourself into a state of mind where you're relinquishing uh, some control over yourself. Um, if you want to put it in really mundane terms that don't really involve psychology much at all, you can think of it almost in terms of uh, of of like signing an agreement, right? If you agree to to perform such and such a service, right? So if you um, if you sign a contract that you'll that you will um, well say you're a hypnotist, right? And you uh, and you agree to to perform at a uh, at a senior um, like a senior and all night party kind of thing. Um, what you're doing is you're not relinquishing your free will exactly. You're just saying that no, no, you have a you have a claim on my time at this time, right? When I say that you do, when you're when you're being hypnotized, it works around the same way that your um, you're agreeing that somebody else has uh, has sway over your mind at a certain time, right. uh, and it's again, it's it's much more um, it's much more subconscious and it's it's less explicit than something like a contract, but it's the same sort of thing. You're still ceding control over yourself to somebody else, and so therefore you're still ultimately in control, and. Like Wizkid said, you probably could just, just sort of snap yourself out of it at really any given time. But the tricky part is that you probably would not want to. Uh, now, that could be for various reasons, right? That could be just because uh, you're in a relatively suggestible state and the, uh, the suggestions from the hypnotist at the time seem reasonable, right? They seem subjectively reasonable, even if they're absurd. You know, clucking like a chicken or... or you know, killing the president or whatever, um, right? Under hypnotism, maybe that seems, maybe that seems reasonable in a sense, right? Because you know, you're very, you're open to suggestion, that sort of thing. Um, on the on the political assassination note, uh, that is probably not possible. Right? It's probably not possible to to hypnotize somebody into doing something that they absolutely would not do otherwise. Um, your inhibitions don't go away that much. Uh, I, don't know, I think I think the Mythbusters actually tested something like that. Um, I mean, it was I don't think it was assassinate the president. I think it was something like like pie Jamie in the face or something, if I remember. But um, but they tested out like trying to hypnotize somebody into doing something that they would otherwise never do. Your pilot should be able to relay this info to your superiors. Um, that it wasn't. It wouldn't work. Um, because again, it only makes you suggestible. It only makes it so that you you perceive the uh, you perceive the suggestions as reasonable, as more reasonable than you otherwise would, uh, and that your mind is in a sort of clouded state. You're not you're not thinking through things as clearly as you otherwise would be. All right. Okay, let's see what we got over here. Uh, 
I'm going to focus a little bit for this one so I don't die again. Um, I got sniped. That's not good. Is that it? Nope, there's more. Uh, so, uh, Wizkid also says, while I'm, while I'm just waiting for those guys to pop around cover, um, pretending like you're a kindergartner again, uh, funnily enough, it, it certainly felt like I was five-year-old again. Uh, but I can't really put it into words. Uh, yeah, it's like... I mean... It's, it, it's a kind of, uh, of getting yourself into a kind of mental state. Uh, and... And a hypnotist is doing it through, uh, through you know, psychological means, uh, means of getting you to think in a certain way. Uh, wait, we're level sixty. What am I? Why does it tell me I have squad points? Oh, I do. I do for Liara and for Garrus. There, that's better. Look at that. All right. All right, so Wizkid says, uh, as a uh, as a follow-up, right, so what if hypothetically you had an internal desire to kill, kill the president, or, like, again, in Minecraft, um, but you wouldn't normally because of the consequences? Could you be suggested to do so uh, in that circumstance? Maybe? I don't know of anyone who has tested such things. Um, hypnotism is very good at uh, at sort of unearthing or, or or bringing to the surface, uh, <clears throat> um, call it buried desires, right? Subconscious desires. So possibly. Um, that said, I mean, I, I don't see much of a reason to think that it is absolutely impossible. But at the same time, if it were possible, I'm sure some intelligence agency would have tried it several times by now. So, given that we have no evidence of it happening, it, it seems unlikely that that sort of thing is doable. Yes, yeah, Kylie, go ahead. See if there had been any studies about that, because that is that is a, <laughs> this is a super fascinating idea and, and uh, an excessively dangerous idea, <laughs> if it is possible. Um, so, hey, neat. I love fascinating and dangerous ideas. What do we got here? Debris field. All right. Solarian stuff. Zathorn boring planet. Um. So yeah, that's that's some of my thoughts on hypnosis. Um, if you do want to check out more of uh, more of what I have to say about the whole relinquishing control of oneself, I did like I said, I did address that in my video on stoicism. Um, when we're when the stream is over, I'll add that to the description because uh, that'll be that that's that's actually super relevant to the issue of uh, of control of, of uh, self control. Um, I've probably mentioned this on stream before. I've certainly mentioned it in class uh, that stoicism is is sort of forms the basis. Um, of a lot of modern cognitive behavioral therapy as well. So if you're familiar with that sort of procedure of, of, of changing how you behave on the basis of how you think and changing how you think on the basis of how you behave, right? So this sort of feedback mechanism, um, uh, then that is, uh, that, that is very much in line with, uh, with how, um, cobalt. Uh, with how stoicism sees the mind and how the mind functions. Sharing. <clears throat> uh, Wizkid says, at the very least, it'd be a good hook for a thriller. Uh, yeah, yeah, it actually would. Um, it'd be one of those, it'd be one of those where, uh, it would have to be one of those where it's like, they kind of lampshade it and say, well, everyone knows that hypnosis can't do things like that. It's not mind control. Um, oh, you did find something? Fantastic. I will, I will, I'll, I'll take a look at what you thought, at what you found. 
please send me links to my email, not to not to text, because I I have trouble following them on mobile. Huh. From the URL looks interesting. Anyway, I will uh, I will check that out after the stream though. So thank you. Um, but yeah, that could make a really cool premise for a thriller. Um, maybe one of those cold burn sorts of thrillers, something like uh, something like like a cold burn psychological thriller where where it follows a protagonist who ha who like fantasizes about killing people and then somebody takes advantage of it and he finds out eventually and that kind of thing. That could be neat. That could be really neat. All right, so Pharos, ancient Prothean city. Speaking of ancient Protheans, um Wizkid said way back, uh, this was 10, 15 minutes ago. Uh, wait, so does that mean we're technically still part of the Prothean cycle? Um and then uh, Mrs. McCoy, CJ, re responded, you find out uh, about the Prothean Cycle a bit more down the line. Um, uh, yeah, kind of. Uh, the Protheans had a lot of long-term impacts beyond their cycle, this being one of them. Uh, this city being another. This 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 whole planet was what's called an ecumenopolis, uh, a, a city planet. Um, taking... Who should I take here? Garrison Tally, probably. It's Geth Galore, so definitely Tally. I don't know. I could use a sniper, so maybe Ashley and Tally? I don't know. If anybody has thoughts as to who I should bring here, you got until I get to the front of the ship. Um, but yeah, this whole uh, this whole planet is uh, an ecumenopolis, a citywide planet. Think Coruscant from Star Wars, that kind of thing. Um, ancient Prothean city, definitely tally because there's Geth everywhere. I need combat, so probably Garrus or Ashley. Overload is handy for Geth. I'll think about it while I continue rambling a little bit. Um, but the, yeah, so like I said, the, the Protheans... Um, I won't spoil the ending of this game, which has a lot to do with it. Um, it has a lot to do with the uh, with the Protheans' impacts on this cycle. Uh, but there was some of the stuff that, that, that I, can, I can really talk about. Italian Liara? Um, I mean, it's suboptimal because look at that lack of combat strength, but... Yeah, yeah, okay. I'll deal with it. Suggestion accepted. I'm not exactly playing on maximum difficulty, so this is normal, I think, so. Um Equalizing interior pressure with exterior atmosphere. Logged. The commanding officer is ashore. Exo Presley has the deck. I need to finish upgrading Tally then. She doesn't need pistols. She doesn't need first aid. She can't use it. I mean, yeah, I guess. Why not? Okay, cool. Uh, I don't need to save yet. It's fine. It auto-saved. Um, so yeah, the uh, the Protheans d did a lot to do with all this. Um, the city is all Prothean, apparently. Um, and then also things like like we just saw, saw meeting primitive humans and others. Who? Who's Fidan? He's our leader. He needs your help to prepare for the Geth. They're making another push. Please, up the stairs past the freighter. Look out! Okay. Well. Tally, you hacked absolutely the wrong one. So, the um, the Protheans had 
almost as much of a thing for uplifting other species as the uh, Salarians do in this cycle. Um, to the point where... Oh god, they're just rocketing each other. Yeah. Um... To the point where, as we see, the Salarians, uh, not the Salarians, the Salarians were, interestingly enough, had absolutely no, um, absolutely no interaction from the Protheans whatsoever. Uh, in fact, you find out that the Protheans would have been surprised by their even being sapient at all, which is hilarious. They're the smart, they're the really hilarious, they're the ridiculously smart ones, um, does that work on those masters? Yes, it does. I hate these stupid things. All right, nice. Area secure. Um, but we find out that yeah, the Protheans were watching humans from Mars. Uh, we find out that they uh, they did in fact give the Hanar or teach the Hanar to communicate. Sorry about the drop frames continuously. I fear the will kill us all. Oh, okay. Anyway. Um, so having to do with hypnosis, going back a back a second, um, Mr. McCoy. Uh, CJ says, I forgot the name of it, but there was a young adult series uh, where the protagonist was a teen who had narcolepsy. Uh, but it really turned out that he was brainwashed into switching to a secret assassin spy uh, to do secret missions, and the narcoleptic, narcoleptic episodes uh, were him just suddenly switching to killer mode. I don't remember that at all. I don't think I ever saw it. I read it, I guess. Coming. I saw it. Yeah, I don't think I ever read it. Um, so no, it doesn't ring a bell. Um, Nothing else in here. Tally. Excuse me. There we go. Um, oh, yeah, because there's Geth, like, right there. Um, so, yeah, we find out that the not only were the Geth watching humans, uh, they were fiddling with the Hanar. Uh, they bioengineered the Asari, uh, as it turns out, and, uh, and sort of watched them and kind of helped them in their early stages of development. Um, presumably among others. Uh, they were very uh, colonist-like. They, uh, they integrated other species into their empire, uh, and that involved uplifting primitive races quite a bit. Uh, so that's what they were planning to do, and then they found out about the Reapers, and then just went everything, had everything go dark until this cycle which the game kind of uses to explain why we're ahead of things, and we're a little more capable of fighting the Reapers than previous cycles had been. Oh, Commander. I'm glad they finally sent somebody to help us. You're a bit late, aren't you? Arcelia. Sorry, Commander. Everyone's on edge since... Watch out! We've got Geth in the tower! Protect the heart of the colony! Kill them all! Okay. Tally's got her shotgun, right? Yeah, okay, good. Is there one directly above me? Not a big fan of that. I don't want to die! Please, don't let me die! Where the hell is that Geth that is right on top of me? Also, where's Liara? This is ridiculous. Here, 
Come back here. There. Yeah, regroup. Okay. There's presumably a Geth here somewhere, but... Oh, are you kidding me? I see it. There. Okay, it fell off the walkway. Anyway. Uh, I think we're supposed to chase the rest of them down, though. Play this fight. Yeah, okay. Oh, hey, big pink geth ship. I'm just gonna shoot it. Okay. Okay. safely out of the Normandy. The Geth base is our next objective. Yeah, some of the Geth ships are actually kind of cool. I kind of like them. I don't need those. I think I need that, but I'll take it just in case. Um, These colonists may not have much, but this is their home. They will fight to the death to defend it. Yeah, so. Yeah, we still have. Uh, and so the, we do wind up finding out things about the. Uh, we found out a lot about the Protheans throughout all three games, but uh, we're still uh, there are still things that are unclear, like if the Reapers were committed to. Um... Oh, Kylie, thank you, thank you for sending the article. I will uh, I'll take that out. I'll take a look at that after the stream. Um, yeah, if the Reapers were committed to wiping out traces of previous cycles, why is there literally a planet covered in Prothean ruins? That's a little bit odd to me. The tower's secure, thanks to you, Commander. I'm just glad your colony's safe. I appreciate your concern and your efforts against the Geth. They may have been slowed, but they'll be back. They always come back. What do they want? If you want answers, go ask them yourselves. We don't know what they're after. That's they super useless. Us, that's all we know. Their main base is at the Exogeny headquarters. A good place to start looking if you want answers. What's Exogeny? It's the company most of us work for before the attacks. They fund this colony. The Skyway leads directly to Exogeny headquarters. You can't miss it. Of course, there's an army of Geth between here and there. I didn't expect this would be easy. Then maybe I can get this colony operational again. What else can you tell me about Exogeny? Exogeny funded this colony. Without them, we wouldn't be stuck here. They specialize in colonization. In return for bankrolling the colony, we work for them. Their main goal is the retrieval of valuable artifacts or resources. Except there isn't anything here. Or if there is, we didn't find it. I wonder if that's what the Geth are looking for. Perhaps. As she said, we never found anything of value. Of course, the Geth could know something we don't. Tell me about your colony. Life is hard and often brutal, even without our current problems. Colonial Affairs back on Earth told us we'd be beneath the notice of any raiders. I guess they weren't counting on the Geth. But, despite everything, 
There's something tranquil about this place, unlike anything I've experienced before. <sighs> Kylie says, It's a guessing game as to when they come back. <sighs> okay, okay. I, I, I grinned, despite myself. Um, WizKid says, uh, I like Waylon Yutani. Very much so. Uh, Exogeny is a lot like Waylon Yutani. The, I think even the logo is kind of similar if I can find it somewhere. How big was the original Ferris colony? We were nearly a thousand at the main site, 200 more at my outpost. When the first wave obliterated our defenses, we fell back to Zeus Hope. The Normandy isn't huge, but we could airlift you out. The Geth fighters are too dangerous, and I won't be driven off this world. It is our home. There's a chance for growth here that's simply not available on other worlds. Uh, yeah, it's also uh, Exogeny is a little bit sketchy in a similar vein to Wayland Yutani. Uh, a lot about this mission draws inspiration from, from the sort of Aliens franchise. What can you tell me about the defenses the Geth have set up? I don't have any details, but I'll wager it's a lot more fortified than the command post. They landed at least one Geth ship at Exogeny, and I've seen large walking tanks on the Skyway. Expect a hard fight. What do you need done to get this place back on its feet? We need those Geth destroyed. Marcelia's right. There are still Geth in the tunnels. We also have more mundane problems like food, water, and power. I'm not sure where we stand on those matters. You should talk to the people overseeing them. Do you have information about Geth in the lower tunnels? Nothing new. They're in the tunnel somewhere, likely guarding a transmitter to coordinate attacks. It's not a critical threat right now, but getting rid of that transmitter will help us defend against further attacks. Is there anything I can do to solve your water shortage? Maka Doyle has been assigned to that particular issue. If you have any insight to offer, please speak with her. What's wrong with the colony's power supply? Mayo Connell is working on our power problems. She'd know more about it than I do. You mentioned something about a food shortage. Davin Reynolds is tasked with securing food for the immediate future. If you can assist, please speak with him. I'll talk to you when I learn more. Good luck. Okay, I just picked up about a half a dozen new quests, so... Uh, look at this guy. You'll have to forgive my wife. Kalantha's not in her right mind. She just needs to relax and accept what's happened. What happened to your wife? The constant attacks have strained us all. She'll adapt. We all have. Is there anything I can do for her? No, she just needs time. Time to absorb everything. We'll be fine. A lot... Of, okay, knowing what happened, it's been a while since I played this game, so knowing the plot of this, of this a lot of the dialogue is just ominous. It just seems ominous knowing what the what's going on i don't know if any of you guys do know but try and uh try not to spoil in the uh in the comments if you do uh if you if either if you've if you've seen or played this before or if you kind of figure it out as we go tell me about the colony i can't tell you much about that you best ask fi dan if you really must know why can't you tell me i just want to know about the colony fi dan is our leader who better to answer questions about the colony do you know anything about this okay. planet? Just what I was told by Colonial Affairs. It's a little different from what they claimed. It's not all bad, though. When the Geth are gone, we'll have a chance to create something even more spectacular than before. Do you have any idea what the Geth were looking for? Uh, I can't think of any reason for an attack like this. We just wanted to build a home. What do you do for the colony? I'm a medic. Or I am since the doctor died. I've tried my best since she was killed. I have to go. Hello, Offworlder. I'm glad that we are totally forgotten by the rest of the galaxy. Dear, please try to rest. You're, you're not ready to speak. But they should know. Uh, I mean, they are very important. Yes. That's better. Ah, okay, that's what I thought. Is there anything I can do for you? I am fine. I just need to try to think clearly. It's just a lingering pain from... from the last attack. I'll be fine. 
I see no major injury, but something must be causing her pain. Please, just let her rest. She just needs rest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Nothing in here? Okay. You're the one who repelled that last wave. They'll be back. And if the Geth don't kill us, we'll die of hunger soon enough. Are you doing anything to remedy the situation? I need to boost rations with Varen meat, but it's too dangerous. The Alpha Varen, he's huge and he's mad. Rabid, maybe. Totally uncontrollable. I can't do anything until he's dead. I have a ship. I could bring in supplies from off-world. I'd rather you concentrate on the Geth. <laughs> Food won't help us if they breach our defenses. Uh, Rally says her face is tired. Um, <laughs> other than the other than the uh, the Andromeda meme, um, yeah, uh, yeah. Did there was not a lot of uh, there is not a lot of expression in her face, and I don't think that's a particular part of the uh, the intention. That was just because I will also say something something worth noting. Uh, keep an eye on these conversations. Because if you actually look, no, the facial animations are not better than Andromeda. A lot of people seem to kind of think they are, just looking at the, the memes, especially if with how Andromeda started when it launched. But no, the big difference is the body animations. There's actual body language in, uh, in a lot of the conversations in ME1 and, and 2 and 3 in the trilogy uh, that were just completely absent in Andromeda. Excuse me. So there is. Uh, so there really are good facial animations in Andromeda. The problem is that the face is the only thing that moves, and that just looks unnatural because it is unnatural. Tell me about Zeus Hope. The colony is growing, or it was. But you should speak with Fidan. He is our leader. Why should I speak with Fidan? Why can't you tell me? I don't want to talk about that right now. Speak with Fidan. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's creepy. Tell me about hunting Varen. Hunting them is impossible while fending off the Geth. On the positive side, they'll attack anything, even those damn synthetics. The big Alpha Varen is the real problem. He's mad, erratic, completely unpredictable. Tell me about yourself. What's to tell? I came here with my wife Greta, looking for adventure, a new life together. This isn't exactly what we signed up for. Of course, it would be much better without the Geth. We were really starting to enjoy the colony before they came. I have to go. So long, Commander. Uh, Rally says, everything but my face is tired syndrome. Yeah, actually, that is a fantastic way of describing the problem. Um, I, I actually think that the, the facial animations for Andromeda, especially once it was patched, are decent. Especially considering that most of them were, were um, procedurally generated. Um, they're actually not bad. It's just it's just that the rest of the animations are awful. The, the, the animation that goes around the face. I'm sorry, but I can't stop to talk. I have to deal with the water shortage. Is there anything I can do? The utilities building was one of the first to fall under Geth control. It has a bright panel. and turn them back on. Until then, this colony is dry. Ma'am, turn your panel down. Tell me about the colony. We are a small group, part of a larger colony, before the Geth attacked. You should speak to Fidan. It's his responsibility. He knows the colony best. What do you know about this planet? I am not the one to ask about that. Ask Fidan or one of the others. Tell me about yourself. I'd rather not. This is not the time or the place. Please, help us or don't. Otherwise, leave me to my work. I have to go. I wish you luck. Nice work with those Geth. Glad you showed up. I still need the power cells for this generator, though. Would it help if I brought in some power cells from the Normandy? We can certainly spare a few. The top of the line ship doesn't use the same parts as the old generator we've got. The cells just aren't compatible. If I find anything while I'm looking around, I'll send it your way. Thank you, Commander. I appreciate it. Commander, I was told to make my supplies available to you, if you wish. How do you keep things in stock in conditions like this? My list of consumers has shrunk significantly since the attacks. 
and few of those have time for shopping. What's your name, Salarian? My full name is Gorat II Heranon Maldinest God Inost Ledra. Humans usually employ surname and given name only. Inost and Ledra, in my case. Why is your name so long? We are named for our origins. Gorat II is my homeworld. Heranon, my clan's country. Maldinest and Got are the city and district where I live. I love that. That is really neat. Um, Wizkid says, these people really don't want your help, do they? Uh, no, and I think there's a reason for that. If only we knew what it was. I'm sure we'll find out. What's a Solarian doing on a human colony? This Solarian goes where the credits are. Or I did. A well-stocked freighter can be a profitable investment on a new colony. But once I was here, I decided to stay on. The colony life grows on you after a while. <laughs> what can you tell me about Zeus Hope? A fascinating place by all accounts, though the Geth have made it treacherous. You might like it here too if you gave it a chance, Commander. I never thought I'd stay in one place for long, but here? I will stay here. This place is barely holding together. Why stay here? I can't give you an answer to that, Commander. At least not one that you would comprehend. Why not try asking Fi Dan? Maybe he can tell you what I can't. <laughs> it, it might course, have something to do with the Reapers. Interesting items. Uh, I need that. Um, anything that's decent. I can't use those. I can't use sniper rifles. Um... Yeah. Rally asks, is this the one planet with the thing in the Asari? Yes. That is all I will say. Oh, no, I'll leave the... No. Okay. Yes, thing and sorry, correct. Work must be completed. Oh, but I can't... I want to play with the buttons. You're the commander of the ship that just landed. Are you the captain of this freighter? Not originally. The captain died in one of the Geth raids. I'm the last crew member. We shouldn't even be here. The Solarian merchant promised us a fortune. I wish... I suppose it could be worse. Rally asks, uh, there ended up being a lot of that in Mass Effect. A lot of what? Things and Asari? What's wrong with the ship? Isn't she Or Reaper stuff. There's too much damage. Maybe if the Geth stopped attacking, I could fix her. Then again, if there were no Geth, I might just stay on a while. What do you do here? I'm just watching over the ship, making sure she doesn't get any worse. <laughs> Nothing else. She's good for hiding in when those Geth come over the walls. It looks like you're monitoring something. No, well, just ship diagnostics. There's nothing. I, I should get back to it, but... If I down, what's the report on? I should go. Maybe I can help you. What are you trying to diagnose? No, thanks, really. No, please, I, I need to get back to work. They'll try to rebuild the command post soon enough. Oh, yeah, Reaper stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, yeah. It's a neat, it is a really neat plot development, I will say. It'll, it's cool how they do it. Um, Things gradually kind of reveal themselves as you go, so I'll, um... Commander, what can I do for you? Some of the colonists are acting strange. We're a close-knit group, Commander. Most of us have lost loved ones, friends. These aren't trained soldiers. Nobody taught us how to deal with the horrors of war. This is our home. We've watched the Geth slowly destroy everything that is important to us. Don't judge us too harshly. I'll talk to you when I learn more. 
Good luck, Amanda. I'm grateful for what you've done, but your heroics don't impress me, Commander. Tell me about Zeus Hope. I can't tell you much about it. You should speak to Pai Dan if you want to know more. He's literally two feet from you. What can you tell me about Exogeny? Very little. I work there as a security officer. I know they were looking for artifacts and anything of value. That's what they do. They fund the colony. In return, we help them uncover buried treasure. It's definitely not as exciting as they make it sound. What can you tell me about the Geth? Do you have any idea what they might be after? I can't tell you anything about that. I suggest you go to Exogeny if you want answers to those questions. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about yourself, Arcelia. I'm a rent-a-cop. I was hired to keep kids from writing graffiti on the walls at Exogeny. Then all this happened. I wasn't trained for this. I didn't ask for it. I just want the feeling you don't like me. How would you feel if you were hung out to dry by every government organization that ever promised to keep you safe? They should have sent a small fleet. Instead, we get one ship. And you're only interested in the Geth. Fair point. Goodbye. Commander. Um, can't or won't? That's a really good question. And I'm sure we will find out. Am I going the right way? Tunnels, yeah. Oh, God. They're everywhere. oh that's great. Sorry, ma'am. Um, Wizkid question was can't or won't. Was that a uh, was that an Archer reference, or was that just attempting to uncover the mystery? I'm trying to remember which way to go down here. Looks like part of a large system. Hey, that's for there water. Are likely others we need to activate as well. Uh, I actually, I also haven't watched Archer in forever. Not since the California season. I do not believe we are finished yet. We should look for another valve. It was a good show, though. Oh, oh, here we go. Thanks, Liara. Okay. That's the last of them. All Okay. <laughs> uh, 
Whiskit says, surprised a uh, good Catholic boy would enjoy something so vulgar. Yeah. Vulgarity has its place, especially in comedy. I have no problem with that. A uh, little problem with that. Um, <laughs> funny story. I uh, I got kicked out of a uh, of a uh, Facebook group, a kind of more, um, I guess, sort of evangelical sort of Facebook group, um, for uh, using an Archer reaction GIF, which, to be fair, it was inappropriate, but, you know, it's a show reference, so whatever. But yeah, it, uh, that, uh, there's a lot in that show that will, uh, that, uh, is, um, that is, uh, uh, not good for delicate sensibilities. Let's put it that way. You don't want to go down there. What's back there? I could tell you, tell you everything. How would you like that? No! That was a good one. Very intense. What's the matter with you? Just invoking the master's whip. Helps remind me I'm still alive. You're here for the geth, aren't you? You're not the only one interested in those things. Who else is looking for the geth? Not looking for. Looking to get rid of. They're a thorn in the side of the... Ah! I'm trying to get to the... <laughs> this one is no longer fit. We should leave him. Is there anything I can do to help you? Do you even want help? Help me? No. No one can help me now. I'd rather die fighting. Fighting what? <laughs> Not that kind of fight. It's like running through a thorn bush. The more you struggle, time's up. Company's coming. Ask Fidan. Ask him about the... Ah! Look out! Okay. Um... Oh, Wizkid says, uh, like, kind of like Bojack's with Bojack Horseman, I take it. Um, did not expect to like that show. I never got into it. I watched, like, an episode at one point. Maybe two. Um, I don't know. I wasn't a fan. Uh, I didn't like it from what I saw, so. It's, it's, it's absurdly nihilistic, and that, that kind of bugged me. Uh, I don't know if that's consistent about it, but I'm not, uh, I, I'm, I, There are there are some kinds of uh, of more absurdist nihilism that I can enjoy, uh, but the uh, but the really kind of downer side of it is uh, I don't like so much the kind of thing you see in Bojack Horseman. Uh, but anyway, yeah, that uh, the system is active. Oh, yeah. uh, so that whole thing that should um, that should help to clarify. I'm gonna save. Oh, first I'm gonna do all this. Ooh, pulse rifle. Yes. Um. Uh, I'm gonna save because this is a this is a hell of a fight. Uh, now, did that did all of that um, did that lend any insights uh, that conversation? I'm wondering if that led any insights to anybody else for uh, in terms of uh, in terms of what's going on uh, with the colony because that guy was a major major uh, plot point. I'm still unsure why there are Krogan here. Were those Krogan? I thought they were Krogan. No, just the assault drones. Uh, what's heal? Krogans aren't here yet. They are around here somewhere, though. Uh, Wizkid says, I'm assuming about Bojack Horseman, uh, I need to watch the first couple of seasons to really get into it. First season's pretty bleak, uh, but gets better with context from later seasons. It's about getting better, but that's hard. Yeah, okay, I, I, can, I can see that. 
Uh, I thought about watching BoJack Kylie says, but uh, I don't know if I can get into it much. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's... It's a fun theme song. If absolutely nothing else, it's like a nice theme song. Okay. Come on, stand up. Bring it on. Nope. Ah, I love biotics. Yep, I absolutely love biotics in Mass Effect 1. I love biotics in every game in the series. But ME1, they are distinctively overpowered. Um, they're just a lot of fun in uh, in like 3 and Andromeda, especially they're just a lot of fun, but uh, in 1, you just can storm through everything uh, with enough power spamming. Oops, wrong gun. Did I just... There we go. Alright, done. I think that did it. Where's Tally? Did I lose Tally somewhere? I think I did. The theme song is fire. It's like something from my more lefty friends can bend over, uh, can bond over, uh, which says a lot. Uh, it's definitely worth watch if you can get over the uh, setting and the premise. Yeah, I'll, uh, I might actually, I might give it a try at some point. I don't know. I tally. What in the world? Get over here. All right, that is everything. I think I can head back now. Let me make sure of that. Uh, got it. Okay. Got it. Got it. Okay, that's it. Oh, there's more Geth up ahead, though. I sense trouble. Uh, yeah, so I kind of want to talk about the plot already, but I guess I'll still wait a little while, at least till we get to Exogeny, because there's... Um, I will say, though, I will say, the guy who we just talked to, the, the crazy person with the weird headaches and whatnot, is very much uh, is, is a big indicator of where the plot is going. So, so if you're lost, that guy helps to explain things. Tally. What the heck? I don't need that yet. All right, let's talk to Phi Dan. Commander, what can I do for you? Some of the colonists are acting strange. We've been over this, Commander. The colonists are my concern. The Geth are yours. I destroyed a Geth transmitter okay. in the tunnels. They won't be a problem any longer. Now will you tell Thank me? Thank you, Commander. We're in your debt. You've taken a great weight off my shoulders. I just wish I had such good news for every problem. Let's talk about Zeus, Hope, and Pharos in general. Of course, Commander. There's a guy living down in the tunnels. Is he one of yours? That would be Ian. He's very sick. He seems to be more than just sick. He hasn't been the same since the attack. We tried to help him, but he wouldn't listen to us. I can't help my people if they won't listen, Commander. Don't you have medical supplies? Something to help him? I wish it was that simple. Ian was a good man I'd like to have with us. Please, Commander. I'd prefer not to talk about it anymore. 
Now will you tell me about the strange behavior? I mean, you Some won't, but... Acting strange. We've been over this, Commander. The colonists are okay. my I'll talk to you when I learn more. Alright, alright. Hmm. Alright, uh, where's our... Wait. What? Was I supposed to talk to her? I'm grateful for what you've done, but your heroics don't impress me, Commander. Goodbye. Okay. Commander. They talk to Fidan. I don't know why it's still showing me a little quest marker. Uh, all right, I'll, I'll, I might. Uh, again, Commander. I once we the turn in all these, maybe the I'll, I'll start yours. talking about it. Excellent. I'll organize a hunt when the immediate threat of the Geth is gone. Uh, okay. I have to go. Here, for your trouble. It's not much, I know, but it's all we can spare. Yeah, I definitely don't need credits, so, so it's fine. Nice work with those Geth. Glad you showed up. I still need the power cells for this generator, though. I found these power cells in the tunnels. Are they what you're looking for? I knew they'd turn up eventually. Here, Fidan gave me some requisition money. It's all yours. Now, if I can kick these power cells into place, I'll have this colony. It literally will not fit in my wallet. The water started running. Space before. wallet. Thanks to you, I assume. Now we just need to deal with the Geth, and we can get back to growing this colony. Here, a few credits for your trouble. Thank you again, Commander. Okay. All right, that should be everything in the colony, so I can talk to Fidan, and then head over to the uh, to the Exogenic Corporation, and on the way we can talk about uh, what the heck is going on here. Um, what do you guys think is going on? So I can see if I can... Uh, uh, oh, never mind. I guess I can just go. Um, I guess. Um, yeah, I'm just... I guess I can just go. Um, any guesses as to what's happening? I mean, you guessed Reapers. Uh, yeah, Exogeny Headquarters. Cool. Let's save just in case. Uh, in any case, I'm going to keep it a little bit vague. Uh, I'm not going to give away exactly what's causing everything and yada yada, all that. Um, but I think it should be clear so far. Uh, or at least it'll make sense. Oh, oh, okay. Hey, hey. Oh, okay. There's, there's one. There's, there was one of them. Um... Some mind, kind of mind control or hypnosis that people are being really weirdly clinging, clingy to the colony. Uh, yes, so um, I'll uh, I'll hold off on saying exactly what's causing it because that's a cool reveal. So I'll leave that. Um, but yeah, it's it's pretty. I think it's pretty clear. It's pretty obvious that there is uh, something that these colonists are not in their right mind. There's something controlling them. Um, but there's something controlling them. Uh, there's some kind of mind control happening. Mind control hypnosis, call it what you want. Um, but the mechanism for it is what we see in the guy we talked to down underneath the, uh... How do I repair my ship? Oh, there we go. It's F. Uh, hive worker bee mind control. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. Um, the mechanism is the interesting part. Uh, I'm not going to exactly, like I said, I'm not going to spoil exactly what's doing it and why. Um, chatter, I still can't get a fix oh god, stupid Mako. Um, but how it works is, like I said, is I think the interesting part, at least for uh, for purposes of uh, of what we have been talking about, Oh god. And there's more inside here. Oh, no, there's more right there. And now there's more inside here.
That didn't kill him. Okay, well, I'm going to have to do it the old-fashioned way. Uh, anyway. Uh, so yeah, there is a kind of mind control going on. Uh, the mechanism for which is uh, why this is particularly interesting, because it's in contrast with uh, with some of the other uh, mechanisms for this sort of I don't know, mind control sort of thing that we see in this game. In this case, uh, we can see it of the uh, in the guy who is down in the tunnels. Um, so what we were seeing him do uh, was he was trying to tell us what was going on. Uh, he was he wanted to tell us what what he was sort of hiding and what the colonists were hiding and what was causing the whole thing and all of that. Um, but when he tried to, he would immediately experience incredible pain, and that would basically prevent him from doing it. Um, the others, um, you could kind of see this as well in the lady who was uh, who was quote unquote sick, right? Um, that she was uh, she was early on in this uh, in this process. Hey. Uh, they were let's say just starting off this process of mind control, uh, and it's a kind of um, the best psychological ex um, parallel would be something like a Pavlovian response kind of. Uh, Kindly asks, is there a chip installed in the brain or something? Nah, not exactly. Relax, Jong. They're obviously not Geth. Get back, Juliana. Who are you? What do you want? Commander Shepard, I'm here to remove your Geth problem. You see? You worry too much. And you trust too easily, Juliana. I'm just glad to see a friendly face. I thought we were the only humans left on this planet. Uh, yeah, WizKid, it sounds like you were typing that right as I was about to say it. Uh, yeah, so uh, it's a kind of uh, it's a kind of Pavlovian response training, um, negative feedback mechanism sort of thing. Uh, that's kind of the idea here. Uh, that's that's the method at least, and this has really interesting implications for responsibility. Uh, and there are different versions of it that we see. The actual effect of it preventing them from speaking. Like with the guy in the tunnels, like with the lady on the, the lady who was sick, but then the others who just default to carrying on the story, to just doing what is what they're quote supposed to do, what they're being conditioned to do, um, but aren't being actively prevented from going against it. Fi Dan and some of the members of Zeus Hope are still alive. I thought you said they were all dead. I said they were probably all dead. <clears throat> they're surviving despite everything the Geth have done to them. We know what that's like. Those damn synthetics are relentless. Uh, Wizkid, maybe I can be a psychologist after all. Um, I I don't recommend using any of these techniques uh, in your in your clinical practice. I will say that much. Uh, probably unethical. By probably, I mean definitely. I'll do whatever I can to keep them away from you, but I need some information. What kind of information? Ignore him. The Geth are up in the Exogeny headquarters, just a bit further along the Skyway. Those headquarters are private property, soldier. Remove the Geth and nothing else. I'm not interested in your company's secrets. Commander, before you go, my daughter, Lisbeth, she's missing. They shouldn't waste time poking around. We could do a proper accounting of our casualties after the Geth are gone. That's my daughter you're talking about. She's still alive. I know it. Where's your daughter, Juliana? She was working in the Exogeny building when the attacks came. Oh, yeah, there were several places she could hide. For a short time. If she's in there, I'll get her out. Thank you, Commander. Thank you. Do you know what the Geth are after? I have no idea. We certainly haven't found anything of use. Something Exogeny is keen to remind us of. We need to recoup our expenses. Nothing personal. Kylie says, yeah, Pavlov was completely going against psychethical guidelines. Two questions about that that I'm not actually sure of. One, uh, weren't his experiments primarily on animals? I don't actually know if he... I don't know... I very know very little about his actual experimentation and his methodology. I don't know if he... Uh, I don't. I didn't think he actually did experimentation on humans. Um, WizKid says, uh, I'm just pleased I recognized it. Well... Uh, the gaslighting is for my cult. I mean, I'd never gaslight my fellow post-apocalypse survivors. Um, 
Uh, yeah, cult leaders in this chat always, aren't, aren't you? I mean, cult leader. It's really just you. <laughs> but no, it's... um. The other, anyway, the other question about Pavlov is, I, I think, didn't, that, well, I think a lot of our, our modern, uh, our modern ethical standards uh, for experimentation weren't really uh, as widespread or as ubiquitous when Pavlov was doing his experiments anyway. Now, I could be wrong about either of those things, so feel free to correct me. I don't know the history of, uh, of clinical psychology too well. Uh, so if that is the case, and if, if I'm, if I'm totally off base about that, definitely let me know. So, what about? What about just, or what about the colony? Tell me about the colony. We established ourselves here four years ago. Growth was steady until the attacks. Our biggest challenge has been the lack of resources. There's just so little here of value. Still, we were making a go of it. It was even starting to feel like home. What brought you here? I guess I thought this would be the start of a new life. I wanted to go where I could feel like I was making a difference. Instead, Everything we built is destroyed. It's very hard not to lose hope. How did you get Speaking split up of. the Zeus Hope colony? Most of us live closer to the Exogeny building. Zeus Hope was mostly used as a port. When the Geth hit, we scattered. Until you told us about the others, we assumed they were killed in the first wave. If we had known they were still alive, we might have attempted to join them. They're fairly secure now. Maybe you should do that. No, 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 I don't think that's a good idea. We, we have no vehicles, and the Skyway offers little protection. Like the building we're in now? Listen, our best hope is to sit tight and wait for company reinforcements. They'll come eventually. Yeah, okay. That wasn't sketchy or anything. Uh, so Kylie says uh, what he did was he used a dog and a bell. Whenever they brought food to the dog, they'd ring the bell. Uh, eventually, when uh, when any bell was rung, the dog uh, would drool to indicate the environmental cues. Uh, with the dogs, yes, I believe the same uh, same with Skinner and his boxes. I don't know anything about Skinner and his boxes. Uh, human testing came later uh, via a um, uh, VE marketing, uh, I believe. Uh, and yeah, events, all those guidelines came later uh, as a result of previous tests. Um, Oh, oh, whoa, okay. Oh, I was, I jumped between both of you guys. So, <laughs> that's why it didn't make sense. Uh, the dog would rule and indicate that uh, environmental cues affect the mind. Uh, I don't think he used humans, uh, but he used a uh, tube in the dog's throat to measure the saliva with food and a bell. Oh, yeah, that's, um, uh, uh, yeah, a little, a little, a little sketchy in terms of, uh, in terms of measurement. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know of Skinner at all the name is familiar but that's about all um but yeah human testing uh human testing came later okay uh yeah i know of uh i know of of i know of the the psychological experiments that are relevant to my field of expertise which is ethics well meta ethics really um and and metaphysics so the most relevant ones are things like uh things like the uh milgram experiments absolutely fascinating fundamentally changed how clinical research was done because the entire procedure was was extremely traumatizing to almost all of the participants so yeah they kind of cut back on those sorts of human experiments and especially human experiments where where the nature of the experiment was kept from the participants i know that that made a big change where's your daughter juliana somewhere at the exogeny headquarters i hope that's just vague enough to work. Let's Stay go. Stay down until I find out what the Geth are after. All right. And please remember, if you see my daughter... I was hoping you'd have a moment to speak with me. I've got a bit of a problem. What do you need? I need to retrieve some data. It's not a big job, but it pays well. Sounds easy enough. What's the catch? No catch, really. It's dangerous work, but not for someone like you. What is it about you that makes people assume we enjoy being in harm's way? It's all the guns. It's not that bad, really. All you need to do is find my console at Exogeny headquarters and drop the data onto this OSD. It's that simple. So Wizkid says uh, B.F. Skinner was a great psycho, uh, was a great uh, psychologist. Um, also, with Skinner boxes, I think, hmm, I think gambling. Uh, or addiction, in that you need a bigger hit to get. Th oh, is this a thing with where he tested like dopamine hits? 
um, and like the effect on the brain, that sort of thing. Uh, if that is the case, then I think I have seen something. I've heard something about that. Uh, Kylie says, true, I watched a documentary in Milgram, uh, and I had secondhand anxiety when they were making the choices. Yeah, it is disturbing. If you have not watched it, there's a documentary about it made in the late 50s, I think, maybe 60s. If you have not watched it, definitely watch it. Be prepared. It is it is kind of psychologically intense uh, because it goes through several test subjects who, as far as they know, kill someone. They don't, in fact, ever, no one's actually harmed in the experiment, but it is pretty intense. Uh, yeah, it's definitely worth watching, especially in terms of uh, deference to authority and and that the effect that can have on the mind. Uh, it's 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 terrifying, quite frankly. Um, the, the whole idea was uh, that um, uh, Milgram was trying to test and trying to figure out how it was that uh, that the Nazis got everyday people to, to sort of listen to them uh, and got everyday people to do such horrible things that they ordinarily would never do. Uh, and, and deference to authority was one of the major factors that they, uh, that they uncovered. Also proximity and uh, proximity to the authority figure, proximity to the subject, the mode of the authority figure, all sorts of things that have psychological impacts. Probably going to come back to that as we're, uh, as we're wa wandering around fighting. Uh, yeah, it's, um, it's pretty relevant to this whole mind control thing and to what extent that even that would, could potentially count as a kind of mind control uh, or responsibility mitigation that sort of thing oh Wizkid says uh okay uh it was the birds in a box where they pick a button a bunch of time uh they peck a button a bunch of times and get a reward of food after x amount of pecks it has to do with reward motivation oh, okay okay hmm interesting yeah i don't know i'm not i again like i said i don't i don't um i don't know anything really about that about uh, skinner's experiments uh, the one with the mice and the switch where they put an electrode on the pleasure center of the brain and then the mice would be given a choice of food or pleasure and they choose the electrode. Oh, God, yeah, that's okay. And then they die because starvation or dopamine overdoses. I think there was something about how... Uh, I've read something about a study where uh, that was somewhat similar where um, I think it was mice mice or rats or some kind of... It was some kind of animal testing where they will basically overdose themselves on, I think, dopamine. Um until they just died. Uh, and it worked very... Uh, it was similar to that. Um, but yeah. Hmm. Anyway, there, there, the, I, I will be... I will kind of have to go back to some of this stuff uh, with respect to talking about um, uh, mind control techniques, especially the kind we're seeing here, this sort of Pavlovian response, the kind of negative reinforcement thing. I'll look around if I get the chance. I appreciate it. That data could be worth a lot of money. Of course, this all depends on getting out of here alive. <clears throat> <clears throat> Tell me about the data I'm getting for you. Plans for a few prototype mods? I'm a freelancer. Some of my mods are highly sought after. Do you have any idea what the geth were looking for? Uh, that's for smarter men than me to figure out. I have no idea what anyone would want with this ruin. Uh, yeah, Wizkid says it was rats and cocaine, I think. Okay. They get so addicted they didn't care about anything else, even sex. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of issues surrounding um, uh, addiction and what it does to our pleasure centers and, and the uh, the addictive response even to to uh, non-chemically addictive substances, non-chemically addictive behaviors. Will have similar effects and it'll have similar uh, behavioral effects as well. Why work in the middle of nowhere if your skills are so useful? Maybe I've got a bit of the frontier spirit in me. That and the alternative is a bit too secure for my liking. Freelancers don't have to worry about security as much, so long as we keep a low profile. Time to get moving. Just keep in mind what I say. Okay. That's all. Let's move on. Anyway, so <clears throat> the technique we see here, uh, this kind of mind control technique, uh, there are two sorts of things going on. Uh, one is the uh, the conditioning, right? Uh, it is the uh, the actual effect of it, right? The the very apparent effect of 
uh, pain response when, uh, when you're about to do something that the conditioner does not want you to do. Um, now that, um, oh god, there's a lot of them, uh, that is a very different uh, kind of effect than what is eventually produced. Uh, what is eventually produced is a kind of, uh, if you want to, if you really want to stretch the term to an extent that I think even actually does kind of work, uh, is a kind of uh, coerced but ultimately voluntary compliance. You owe us for this. The Skyway is crawling with Geth. Package is secured. We're leaving now. Excuse me, what was that? Shooting. I don't. I have no idea what that radio chatter was about. That was weird. Um, so, um, whiz kid, uh, as an operant conditioning chamber, also known as the Skinner box, the laboratory apparatus used to study animal behavior, it's used to study both operant conditioning and classical conditioning. Uh, so Kylie says it reminds me of Brave New World. Uh, yeah, Brave New World is a great example of uh, of this kind of conditioning, the kind of conditioning that is um, is coerced because the alternative is is you know pain or or, or even just social pressure. Uh, but it is strictly speaking chosen. All right. So in this case, we see like people like Fidan, the um, most of the colonists, with the exceptions of the the guy in the tunnels and the lady on the bed. Um, Ah, uh, yes, here they are. Um, okay, I'm stuck. Oh. Okay, dead guy. That's cool. Great. Damn it, wrong gun. Also, my window is a little messed up. My uh, game window. Um, yeah, dude's on the bridge for smuggling. That's right. I mean, it's something like that. Wait, what? Where's that other Geth? Eh, yeah, well. Maybe nowhere. That's fine, I suppose. Oh, he's down there. Okay. Great. Anyway. Uh, so something about smuggling, that's right. Uh, but yeah, the, the um, maybe coerced might not be exactly the right term. Maybe something like induced hedonism. Um, something like that. Because it isn't strictly coerced, it's, uh, if we want to say, maybe trained. Um, it's kind of trained behavior rather than, than forced behavior. Uh, now, there is forced behavior going on here, right? The guy in the tunnels and the lady on the bed, uh, they're about to do something, and then they get a pain response. Right? They, they, get, they get this pain trigger to them. And that coerces them into not doing the thing that they otherwise were about to do. Uh, is that... Oh my gosh, I am dropping a lot of frames on the stream. I'm very sorry about that. I don't know exactly what to do about it. It says I have an excellent connection. I don't know why... It's being so difficult. Um, I don't know. Anyway, uh, but in that case, right? In the case of the if the um, the woman on the on the cot, right? The sick woman, uh, the one who presumably was just uh, whose sort of uh, brainwashing process had only just begun. Uh, I think is the implication, at least. Um, her and the guy in the tunnels are experiencing direct compulsion. Right? They are uh, they're at the point where if they try to do something, um, if they try to do something, they will be punished for doing it immediately in a way that prevents them from doing it. Uh, the guy tries to say what is what is going on, uh, but he can't because he's he's induced with incredible amounts of pain. 
That's straightforward enough. That is a kind of... Uh, that is, I would say, the kind of... Uh, uh, the kind of coercion that that means that they are simply not responsible right, for their behavior, because that's not even behavior in that case. It's just involuntary uh, pain reaction. Uh, and if it's an involuntary pain reaction, it's not like something that you can be blamed for or even praised for if it's a praiseworthy sort of thing. Right. By contrast, the rest of the colony... Uh, the ones who had been controlled, broadly speaking, uh, but they were controlled by a sort of training. Right? They were they were initially coerced, so they uh, they were taught they were uh, coerced by this sort of um, pain response methodology. Right, the same the same sort of thing that's happening to the to the to the immediate cases, call them. Uh, but the difference is that now they. Uh, Call it, uh, maybe you can say something like they get used to the uh, kind of complying with the uh, with whoever it is who is doing the, the coercion. The whoever it is we will find out about. Oh, this is going to be tight. Oh. There we go. Alright, so this is quite a fight, so let's... Uh, Okay. Okay. That was not quite a fight. I forgot what this this was like bringing Tally. Wow, Tally's overpowered for, for Gath. That was amazing. All right. Uh, anyway, so most of the people. Um, they were not coerced in the same sense. Right? They are, strictly speaking, uh, they're not being uh, prevented from disobeying. It's just they get into the habit of obeying because they've been doing it for so long under the threat of this kind of... Uh, I'm going to save first before I do that. Um... They get under. They get used to complying under this kind of threat, right? Um, I already have one. I don't need the rest of this. All right, so they get used to complying. Right. So naturally, what they 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 do, they comply, right? Um, but what's interesting, what's different about this, is that they are strictly speaking complying voluntarily albeit under an implicit threat. They're complying because they have they have formed a habit of compliance. Um, rather than complying because they are forced to, uh, like the others are. Oh, okay. I'm so sorry. I thought you were Geth, or one of those barons. You're safe now. But why were you here in the first place? It's my own fault. Everyone else was running, and I stayed to back up data. Next thing I knew, the Geth ship latched on, and the power went out. I was trapped. I, I tried to get out, but the way was blocked. We'll get you out as soon as we find out what the Geth are after. It's not the Geth. It's the energy field they put up. They don't want anyone else getting access to the... I'm here for the Geth. It's very important that I find out what they're after. I don't know for certain, but I'm guessing they're here for the Thorian. Thorian? What is that exactly? It's an indigenous life form. Exogeny was studying it. What else can you tell me? Do you know where I can find this Thorian? I... I might be able to, but not with those geth crawling around everywhere. Look, we need to get out of here, past that field. Do you know how we can shut it down? No, not exactly. But I think the geth ship is powering it. I've noticed the Geth laying power cables everywhere. You could follow those cables, but there's Geth all over the place. Why do you think the Geth would be interested in the Thorian? It's just a plant. I don't know why the Geth would care. Exogeny was studying it, but I don't think they found anything special. Tell me what you know about the Thorian. 
I really don't know that much about it. I think it's some kind of plant being. I know it's very old. Thousands of years, even. Tell me about yourself. I'm just a research assistant for Exogeny. I came here with my mother. I don't even know if she made it out alive. She's with some others from the colony. She's safe for now. She's alive? Oh, thank God. I thought I was the only one left. Please, Commander, just get that field down so I can see my mother again. You stay put. I'll go open some doors. Oh, here, take my ID. This should get you past any locked doors. Good luck with that field. Okay. So, um, we are starting to piece together a little more of what's going on. Liara is dying. Got eaten alive by Varen. Um, so, as I was, uh, as I was saying, uh, there is a difference between uh, the immediate coercion and the kind of coercion over time. Okay. I am unable to comply. Please contact your supervisor. Damn it! Tell me what I want or I'll blast your virtual ass into actual dust! Please contact your supervisor for a level 4 security exemption or make an appointment with... STUPID MACHINE! If there is nothing else, please step aside. There is a queue forming behind you for the use of this console. Oof. Okay, well, he's also biotic, so that's cool. Is he gonna stand back up? Sometimes Crow can do that. ...reminds all staff that the discharging of weapons while on company property is strictly forbidden. Welcome back, research assistant Elizabeth Bainham. What can I do for you? Uh, how do you know I'm Lisbeth? Your access card identifies you as Elizabeth Bainham. Is there something you require, Dr. Bainham? What information was the last user attempting to access? Fetching data. The previous user was attempting to access details on the study of subject species 37, the Thorian. Tell me everything you told the Krogan. I was unable to provide the previous user with any relevant data. Aside from lacking proper access, there has been no new data available on species 37. All sensors monitoring the observation post at Zeus Hope have been inactive for several cycles. What does Zeus Hope have to do with the Thorian? Species 37 is located within the substructure of the Zeus Hope outpost. Tell me everything you know about the Thorian. The Thorian is a simple plant life form that exhibits a sentient behavior uncommon with other flora. Through dispersion and the eventual inhalation of spores, it can affect and control other organisms, including humans. The Zoo's Hope Control Group has yielded interesting results. Before sensors went offline, almost 85% of all test subjects were infected. Are you saying Exogeny knew its people were getting infected? It was deemed necessary to assess the true potential of Species 37. That explains their strange behavior. Their pilot should be warned. So, yeah, there you go. That's, uh, talk about unethical, uh... Talk about unethical psychological research practices. Joker, come in, Joker. Damn it, that field's blocking us. We must find a way around the field. We must get back to Zeus Hope. VI, what can you tell me about the Geth ship and the field it's generating? I have limited data on the Geth. They have effectively blocked all sensors within the facility. I have detected unusual power fluctuations, but am unable to determine the source. Please access my personal files. Elizabeth Bainham, Research Assistant, Biomedical Division, Security Level 4 Exemption. You are currently under probation due to disagreements with management over established company policy. These sanctions may be lifted if your next evaluation is more agreeable. What triggered the probation? You were marked as combative about the operations of the Zoo's Hope project, specifically regarding the handling of the infected colonists. 
As a result, you are tasked with monitoring the safety of the colonists for the duration of the observation. Uh, so, Wizkid says, hmm, it's like they're the mushroom zombies via mycelium, kind of, but um, it doesn't directly take control of the body. So that's the, that's the big difference, and that's kind of the difference I was pointing to, right? So it's a kind of, uh, like I said, it's a kind of negative feedback mechanism um, to, you know, protect the thorium, this cre the plant creature, and to carry out its rudimentary will insofar as it has one. Um so yeah, this is a this is a it's it's that kind of uh, sort of hive mind control, but uh, with a very interesting uh, mind control mechanic that has really uh, in fascinating implications in terms of personal responsibility and and uh, and to what extent the will can be uh, can be conquered. I guess if you want to put it that way. Tell me about the Thorian. Species 37 was discovered several weeks ago when a small team was infected with spores while examining ruins near the Zoo's Hope outpost. The outpost was quarantined immediately and study of the infection began. Within 21 days, 58% of colonists exhibited altered behavior. Within 28 days, 85%. Do you know how the creature controls its slaves? The will subversion manifests as intense pain if directives are ignored. The effect is severe enough that subjects are soon conditioned against even minor thoughts of rebellion. Observation suggests the Thorian views its thralls in a utilitarian way. Care is apparently taken to avoid injuring them, much as a craftsman avoids damaging his tools. As long as no action is taken against the creature's objectives, the subjects are free to pantomime a normal existence until specifically tasked with something. Is it intelligent? Can I reason with it? The Thorian does not exhibit the focused behavior of a predator. The release of spores is an act of survival, not aggression. It does trigger advanced behaviors in the humans it enslaves, but we have yet to discover whether it recognizes or is capable of recognizing humans as more than tools. It is sufficiently alien as to defy classification at this time. So yeah, like I said, uh, it, there, the, the comparison to Weyland yutani Corp uh, is pretty pretty close. I'm, I'm sure they took some inspiration from, Al from the Aliens franchise or that sort of thing for, uh, for this plot arc. Where's the center of this thing? The Thorian is present as a weave of tendrils across much of the lower surface of Pharos. Observation of enslaved subjects suggests there may be key clusters that are tended by thralls. Unfortunately, direct observation of species 37 is limited or non-existent. What's the size of this thing? The Thorian appears to be a diffused creature. Its cognitive abilities are centered in large nerve bundles, but it receives data from kilometers of meandering tendrils. We have discovered bundles approximately one meter in diameter, but these seem insufficient to coordinate the massive sensory potential it possesses. It may simply process such stimulation slowly, or perhaps there is a nerve cluster of a greater magnitude we have not yet encountered. I want to know about Exogeny Corporation. Exogeny Corporation is at the forefront of human expansion in the new galactic economy, funding colonial development and securing resource rights to ensure our progress as a species. Further inquiries regarding company policy may be directed to consumer information services during regular business hours. Who's in charge here? Who organized the research? All decisions about local resource analysis and acquisition are made by on-site management deferring to the board of directors only when seasonal quotas are missed or exceeded. Individual employee records are confidential. What do you know about the Geth? I have no specifics on the Geth as they relate to this facility. All sensors have been purposely decommissioned since their arrival. That's enough for now. Going to standby mode. Okay, so that's a lot of that's a huge info dump. So hopefully that was uh, that was that was that was helpful. And uh, so the mystery is basically uncovered. We have not encountered the creature yet. That comes later. Um, but for now, um, we can kind of see what's uh, what's going on. Neat. Boom. The Geth used these claws to anchor their ships to the sides of buildings. Indelicate, perhaps, but very efficient. How do we cut the power if it's coming from the ship? It will be difficult. 
We can check the other claws for weaknesses, but the gap are very thorough. This structure seems to have significance for the Geth. Is it possible they set up this room to serve as a sacred temple of sorts? The Geth blur the line between organic and synthetic life. It's natural to assume they seek understanding from a higher power. This structure seems to have significance oh, okay. for the Geth. We already said that. Is it possible they set up this room to serve as a sacred temple of sorts? Um, possibly. The Geth blur the line between organic and synthetic life. So yeah, um, they seek understanding from a higher power. The uh, part of the difference here, uh, part of the difference I wanted to point out between these two sort of, I guess maybe you should, maybe it's best to say these uh, two stages of uh, of uh, uh, of mind control uh, is that in the one case. Uh, in the in the immediate case when what the heck oh hey didn't even see you there uh, in the immediate case where they are being controlled by by a um, they're being stopped from acting in uh, sort of immediately um, you know because if they act in a certain way they will be uh, uh, they will have an extreme pain response etc right all that. The um, in that case, it's it's very clear that it's not that the will is being impeded, right? Because it's just action that's being impeded, right? Uh, where you're being forced to act in a certain way because if you don't act in that certain way, um, you'll experience incredible pain, which will simply stop the external action from occurring, right? It's not like you even have the little the uh, the option to disobey. It's just you're physically prevented. It's like you're being held down uh, and, so to speak, forced to do something. Um, oop, that hurt. Um, in the other case, though, in the long-term conditioning case, the Pavlovian response kind of thing, or, or what have you, uh, that becomes more interesting because at least it seems like that is the kind of thing uh, that... Uh, that is the kind of thing that you um, it winds up requiring the uh, that was the files for the guy uh, it winds up requiring the uh, the cooperation of the subject of the brainwashed person so to speak um, even if the cooperation is, uh, is at gunpoint or the equivalent let's keep looking no, but there's something here that will help us. It's not that guy. Yay, saved. Oh, that hurt a lot. That works. This is interesting, Commander Shepard. A containment lab of some kind. It is not the last the other claws. Okay, it's done. Even one claw and that ship will fall. Alright. Anyway, so what do I say? Um even in the in the longer term kind of uh brainwashing that is because it requires the the uh, complicity, let's say, of the uh, of the person who is brainwashed. Uh, hey, somewhere in the Armstrong Nebula, that's a side quest. Um, because it requires the the will of the person uh, to kind of go along with it. Uh, it isn't strictly speaking overriding the will. Not exactly. Um, it is giving the will a reason to go along with what it otherwise would not go along with. It's giving you a reason to obey, basically, even if that reason is a threat. 
Okay, so this is a this is a, one of those one of those add things together pressure module type things. You have to get the 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 PSI number between thirty one and thirty four, uh, and it'll cut off the thing. From, it'll slam the doors closed. Uh, so let's do some math. Uh, five, seven, seventeen, eleven, thirteen, uh, thirteen, seventeen. This is uh, no. So thirteen. 11, 7, and it did it. That was one of the easiest capital ship kills I have ever seen. The exit will be down. Now we can go deal with the Storian creature. I hope that ship was full of those Geth bastards. I repeat, Normandy to shore party. Are you reading? Anyone there? Normandy to shore party. Come on, Commander. Talk to me. Is that you, Joker? What's going on over there? We're in lockdown here, Commander. Something happened to the colonists. They're banging on the hull, trying to claw their way inside the ship. They're freaking out. They can't do any real damage. We're on our way back. Just hold your position. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, we'll just wait right here for you, Commander. This place will be crawling with Geth in a minute. Keep together and we'll get out of here in one piece. Okay, so. Uh, the Thorian is telling them to go and do their thing. Um. So. Let's, uh, that's not the right way to go back. So, in any case, the, um, the big concern with, with brainwashing, uh, is, uh, what I've talked about before, especially what I talked about in my lecture on unfree choice of the will, and Anselm's unfree choice of the will, uh, is the impossibility of the will being truly coerced, or truly changed, or truly altered, by something outside of itself, because uh, according to Anselm, Anselm's argument is basically that uh, for something outside the will uh, to change the will, in other words, to force the will to to choose something else, uh, is self-contradictory. We should get out of here. I don't think this place is safe. I need some answers. You knew more about the Thorian than you let on. I. I was afraid. I wanted to stop the tests, but they threatened me. Told me I'd be next. When the Geth attacked, I stayed behind to send a message to Colonial Affairs. I tried to tell them where to find the Thorian, but the power cut before I could send the message. I... I never meant for this to happen. You did what you could. I'll help them if you can tell me where to find the Thorian. The Thorian is underneath Zoo's Hope, but the entrance is blocked. The colonists covered it with the freighter just before the Geth attacked. But why are the Geth after the Thorian? What could Saren want with it? Well, it does have unique mind control capabilities. That's what Exogeny was interested in. Normandy to shore party, come in. What is it, Joker? We're getting a lot of Geth comm shatter. Looks like they're headed your way. Thanks for the heads up, Joker. You heard the man. Let's move out. I'm coming with you. I might be able to help. Undo the mess I helped create. Good. So, um, yeah, so the point I was making, right, uh, is the, um, so Anselm, uh, Anselm claims that it is, it's explicitly self-contradictory, uh, to claim that the will can be altered by something outside of itself, right, so that something can force the will to change, can force you, in the strictest sense, force you to make a decision, um, and so brainwashing or, or mind control or whatever that, that works in that sort of a manner um, is contradictory. Um, the only way that it can make sense is something like this, something which works on the basis of getting someone to change their mind through some kind of compulsion. Um, whether that's a kind of intellectual compulsion, so it, it, you, it's, um, 
for lack of a better term, you're convinced to change your mind. Um, uh, or, so, convinced to change your mind in the sense of, uh, of, of it, uh, it changing the way that you perceive things, changing the way that you understand things, that kind of thing. Uh, or in this manner, which, which um, it, it, it uh, punishes you for making the wrong decision, and so it gives you an additional factor to consider, right? If, uh, right, it lets you know that if I disobey, it's going to hurt me, and I'm not going to be able to do the thing anyway. Right. So in that case, right, in a case like this, it's not mind control, strictly speaking. It's not altering the will. Right? Um, it's just providing a reason to obey, in a sense. And so it's perfectly coherent. It's perfectly consistent with Anselm's argument. Uh, in fact, Anselm goes so far... Is there anyone picking this up? Yes. What the heck? That's your mom. She's alive. Um, so it's even, uh, even, so Anselm, oh, here we go. Uh, so Anselm claims that even God, God, who is omnipotent, cannot overpower the will in that way. Uh, so, so yeah, it's more like 1984. It's the way that it's, it's, getting you to uh, it's right it's providing you with a reason to change your mind it's not forcibly changing your mind so yeah the 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 torture uh, yes so Wizkid, perfect example from 1984 uh, is torturing winston um into believing two plus two equals five right or at least torturing him until he eventually will willingly admit that two plus two equals five uh, because if you torture him until he admits it, then what you're doing is you're changing his behavior, which is ultimately changing his mind. So there's an interesting feedback loop sort of thing there as well. Um, I talked about this in one of my video lectures. I don't remember which. I'll see if I can find it. If I can find exactly where I talked about that, I'll put it in the description as well uh, when I get once we uh, once the stream's over. Um, but in any case, yeah, it's uh, it's it's not exactly that it's changing the will it's just giving the will a reason to change it's giving you a different reason to choose something differently and because of that it's it's perfectly coherent with anselm's very very strong claim that even an omnipotent god right god being omnipotent can't force the will to change it requires the cooperation of the will um i'll take a second and then i'll read your comment here I think you're spot on. Everyone shut up. Uh, let me think. What's going on? You won't get away with this. Get her out of here! Get away from her, you son of a bitch! Lisbeth! Damn it! Come, come out where I can see you! All of you! <laughs> Shepard. Damn it. I knew it was too much to hope the Geth would kill you. <laughs> I found some interesting facts about you in the Exogeny database. I know what happened on a coos. This doesn't have to end like that. <laughs> oh, okay, he's terrified. Uh, I forgot that Shepard was a sole survivor. <laughs> um, survived a massive, huge massacre that killed countless people on both sides. Uh, so anyway, uh, WizKid says, yeah, exactly. Uh, that's why in Christianity you have to uh, come to God willingly, otherwise it isn't true worship. Exactly, right? So uh, Anselm gives a really, really thorough explanation of this. Uh, and I, I direct you to it for this in particular, um, his le uh, my lecture series on Anselm's on free choice of the will, uh, or sorry, on just on free choice, I think, uh, on freedom of choice. Sorry, um, minor distinction in those terminologies. Uh, that's in my more recent video on the stomach principle, why the terminology varies. Uh, in any case, though, yeah, it, Anselm's idea is that it's that if God were to coerce you into believing or coerce you into loving God, then you would not love God. Right? It's, it's because then the change in your will would mean that either you changed, right? So you did it voluntarily and it wasn't God's doing, or God altered your will and so your will didn't change. You still are unwilling to love God. So it's not, so God either way can't change your will. Because to do so is a logical contradiction. And so this is why uh, Anselm is so hardcore on uh, synergistic models of salvation. 
right? So synergistic soteriology, uh, as opposed to what's called monergistic soteriology, which is um, broadly speaking what you see in something like Calvinism, that God does all of it. For Anselm, God also does all of it, but so do human beings, right? There has to be both cooperating towards the same goals because otherwise it's not going to happen. Right? Otherwise it's, a, it's, again, like I said, it's a contradiction. We can talk this out. Nobody needs to get hurt. You, you don't understand. It's not that easy. Communications are back up. Exogenic wants this place purged. This is a human colony, Jong. You can't just repurpose us. It's not just you. There's something here far more valuable than a few colonists. You're after the one unique thing Pharos has. The Thorian. The what? It's a telepathic life form living under Zeus' hope. It's taking control of the colonists there. Exogeny knew all along. You won't get away with this, Jong. So you keep saying, but nobody's gonna miss a few colonists. Can't you see the inherent potential in this colony? Think of the promotional opportunities. Opportunities? What the hell are you talking about? They recovered from an alien attack on a frontier world. Add that to your company profile. Well, yeah. No one's ever gone broke playing the champion of humanity card. Sadly, you'd probably make a killing. But if it will let us get back to our lives, I'm for it. It just might work. Wait, no, but the infected colonists will throw a bit of a wrench in that plan. No, no, they need to disappear. You can't just kill the colonists. It's not their fault. If you kill only the Thorian, it might be enough to stop the infection. Maybe. It's worth a try, but I don't know if I can avoid harming the colonists. There has to be another way. Maybe there is. Come and talk to me before you leave, Commander. Just make sure there's no evidence when you're done. <laughs> no evidence. Yeah, sketchy as hell. Any luck finding my workstation out in the ruins? I thought I did. Tell me about the data I'm getting for you. Oh, damn. Thanks for a few prototype mods. I'm a freelancer. Some of my mods are highly sought after. No, yeah, okay. I guess I don't get I them. I haven't found your workstation or data yet. Just keep it in mind while you're out there. All right, well, never mind. I guess guess I give up then. Um, I thought I found it. I thought that was one of the things that I found, but I guess not. I'm glad you've decided to help us. I think there's a way to avoid killing the colonists. What'd you have in mind? I think you could safely use a nerve agent to neutralize the colonists. Like a gas grenade. Releasing clouds of nerve gas doesn't seem like a particularly good idea. It's not like it's weapons grade. The insecticide we use in the grow labs contains trace amounts of tetraclopene, a neuromuscular degenerator. If their nervous systems are already weakened, it may act as a paralyzing agent. A reduced capacity concussion grenade might suit our needs. Sounds good. I'll do what I can. Excellent. Thank you so much, Commander. Okay. Let's go do that. I also got a ton of other stuff that I'm going to get rid of. Uh, where's my grenades? There we go. Grenades change to Thorian gas. Cool. That'll work. Uh... You shouldn't be wasting time. It's almost time, isn't it? All right, let's go. Maybe we can free our friends after all. I have to help them. It's my fault this happened. Uh, yeah. So this is the kind of uh, this is the kind of mind control that where I mentioned, which is. Uh, um, the sort of the sort of um, stimulus response sort of mind control. Um, it's not again. It's not a, a direct manipulation of someone's will, um, because again, according to Anselm, at least, and I think he's right here, that would be impossible. Um, and it's also not a uh, uh, not even a a manipulation of someone's mind in any direct way. Uh, it's just torture. Basically, right? it's the same sort of thing that, uh, as you pointed out, that we see in something like 1984. Um, whoop, down me. Um, where a uh, the target is just compelled to act in a certain way because if they don't, they'll be tortured, and they know that, right? They uh, they understand that uh, that their actions would have negative consequences, and they want to avoid those consequences. Therefore, etc. As Scotus likes to say. Um, 
Incidentally, that is one of my favorite little stupid things that SCOTUS says all the time, which is therefore, etc. Uh, a lot of the time, and you'll actually see this a couple of cases when, it, when we do the, uh, the reading group bit. Um, uh, hey, here we go. Creepy. Okay, done. That was neat. Um, no amount of infection could have altered a human to that extent. I wonder what is going on here. No hitting the colonists, even if the Thorian makes them fire on us. That's what the gas grenades are for. As you order, Commander Shepard. Okay, do not kill the colonists. Uh, so anyway, what I was saying, uh, Scotus likes to say that likes to do this thing. Um, Uh, where he just says uh, at the end of an argument, therefore, etc. Uh, because the implication is you just you know how the argument goes. I don't need to do the rest of it for you. Darn it! Darn it! I need to use unity. Oh, that worked. Um, and I absolutely love this about Scotus. Damn it, I keep flicking it the wrong direction. That's it. Okay, cool. Um, so Scotus will lay out an argument, and then when he's done with the argument, uh, rather than actually presenting a conclusion, he'll just sort of he'll just sort of stop partway through making the argument and say therefore, etc. Because, like I said, he knows he knows that the reader kind of knows what you're talking about, it's what he's talking about. He doesn't need to lay out the entire thing. Um, he said enough of it so that you can kind of follow what's left and fill in the blank on your own, which I absolutely love that. Like I said, it'll show up in the um, uh, in the text for the reading group. Uh, that'll probably be up pretty soon. Lift. Ooh, nice shot, Tally. Ah, oh, damn, did I kill colonists? I did. My explosive ammo did it. Left. This sucks. Oh, there we go. Five grenades. That that'll help. Okay. And blap. And blap. That's all the colonists, I think. I hope.
Alright. There are the controls for the crane, Commander Shepard. Can you make sense of them? There we go. Alright, they're done. Anyway. Alright, let's see. I tried to fight it, but it gets in your head. You can't imagine the pain. I was supposed to be their leader. These people trusted me. It wants me to stop you, but I won't. I won't! Mass Effect has a lot of suicides by headshot, I will say. Almost a disturbing amount. Alright. Anyway. So. So that's one method of uh, mind control. The other kind of mind control that is present in this game is uh, Reaper indoctrination. Uh, actually, there's technically another kind of mind control, but that doesn't come until the third game, and we'll have to talk about that in a very long time. Um, that would be enthrallment, but uh, All right, we just need to find this Reaper creature. indoctrination, Reaper mind control. mind control, works a bit differently. So I'll talk about that after that thing. That does not look like any plant I've ever seen. This may be problematic. Invaders, your every step is a transgression. A thousand feelers appraise you as meat, good only to dig or decompose. I speak for the old growth as I did for Saren. You are within and before the Thorian. It commands that you be in awe. You gave something to Saren, something I need. Saren sought knowledge of those who are gone. The old growth listened to flesh for the first time in the long cycle. Trades were made. Then cold ones began killing the flesh that would tend the next cycle. Flesh fairly given. The old growth sees the air you push as lies. It will listen no more. I won't let you keep your thralls. Release them. Now. No more will the Thorian listen to those that scurry. Your lives are short, but have gone on too long. Your blood will feed the ground in a new growth. Sorry for the lack of chatter, guys. This is um, a pretty significant boss fight. I always have trouble with this one. Ooh, it's really doing some creepy tentacle stuff. All right, um, I'm really quick. I'm going to... Oh, I don't need any of this stuff. Oh, God. I'm going to switch my ammo uh, to... Sledgehammer. Do a little bit of extra impact on the bastards. That'll work. Um, okay, so anyway, like I was saying, um, 
Reaper indoctrination works a bit differently. Definitely something different in this area. Yep, that's a node. Uh, are there more coming? No, don't seem to be. Okay, now there's going to be more coming. That had the desired effect, I believe. A few okay. more, and it will be severely hurt. They are not moving. Ah, uh, here we go. Um. So Reaper Indoctrination is another kind of mind control that works in a pretty fundamentally different sort of way. Um, Reaper Indoctrination, who we're, which we're going to see some of later on uh, and have somewhat of an explanation as to how it works, uh, for now I will I'll just kind of give a brief version of the explanation. I'm stuck. That's not good. Um, so the brief version is that it messes with your mind, uh, and it makes unreasonable things seem reasonable. Ah, jeez, got warped. Um, so that is something more like changing your sensory input, right? So it makes, um, by making unreasonable things seem reasonable, what it's doing is it's not actually altering your will. It's not even directly influencing your choices. Um, rather, what it's doing is it is getting you to. Um, it's it's more like convincing you, not through kind of a kind of conversion uh, coercion, like what the Thorian does with its pain spores. Uh, but rather by eh, why am I looting in the middle of a fight? This is silly. <laughs> uh, rather than by pain spores or oh god that was rough. Um, or something like that, rather what it's doing is uh, is changing how you understand things, or changing how you perceive things, messing with your intellect, rather than messing with your will, per se. Uh, and because it's messing with your intellect rather than your will, uh, it isn't sort of overriding your, um, your choices. Uh, and so, again, it's not a kind of... Uh, it's not the incoherent sort of mind control, if you want to think of it that way. Um, it is the kind of mind control which is consistent with uh, with what we've been talking about. No. Um, but in that case, it works a bit differently. Okay. I hate that. Drop. Go away. Bye-bye forever. Um, so in that case, right, it is still a matter of... Um, uh, how would I put it? It's still a matter of, uh, of changing someone's uh, thought processes rather than directly changing how they're going to behave, right? Um, so that makes it still consistent, right? That makes it still make sense in terms of the will. So both forms of mind control that we see in, in at least in Mass Effect 1 uh, are not exact, are not actually uh, manipulating the will. They're not actually changing your choices, uh, at least not in a, in a kind of direct manner or in a way that would be inconsistent. Oh, are you serious? Get out of here. I hate the wide shotgun spread if you don't if you're not trained with it. That's annoying. There we go. No, they're not. Oh, that's not good. Um Okay, done, got him. Are there more coming? What about the rest of the, oh, here we go. So 
So even Reaper indoctrination is not exactly a um, an overriding of the will. It's more like uh, a an alteration of the intellect or an alteration of perception. Uh, this actually really ties in with uh, with uh, what I mentioned in my stomach principle video because, as uh, Scotus points out, that the um, oh, there's a hazard there. Um, Scotus points out that the intellect is a non-rational power in in the relevant sense, right? It is a power um, that is determinate. Uh, so, Wizkid, so how you think versus what you uh, versus uh, what you believe. I mean, it could be either, really. Um, it is uh, the implication is it's more how you think than what you believe, but um, ah, dang it, wrong weapon. I hate this. Okay, drop. Okay. Um, either one, at least, could be consistent, uh, how you think, what you believe. Uh, both of which are alterations of the intellect rather than direct alterations of the will. And it's direct alterations of the will which are supposed to be impossible. Where is it? Is it? Uh, it's probably stuck in the ceiling, damn it. Are there any more? I mean, obviously these. Ah, these bastards. Their only attack is a vomit, so it's a they're it's an area it's an area effect. It's just right in front of them. Just die already. There we go. I don't want to walk through here. Uh, right, so so um, it's actually really pretty similar to Scotus's point about the uh, about the intellect, uh, just sort of cognizing what is put what is put before it. So it's a kind of malfunction of the intellect that Reaper indoctrination is in, is uh, introducing. It gets you to to mistake um, mistake what would otherwise not make sense. It gets you to think that it makes sense. Right? That's a, that's kind of a way of looking at it. Okay, so there's a lot of creepers coming, but where are they coming from? Down here, right? I take it. Ah, uh, yes. No? Uh... I am just kind of standing in the middle here, and I'm... Uh, where is she shooting? Oh, that works. Uh, like, okay, so good example, I think, from the third game. So they convince you, uh, WizKid says that they convince you that synthesis with them, um, synthesis with them is the best option and validates the ending. So yeah, something like that, right? So it, it's not that, it's not that it compels you to make the choice, it makes the option that they present seem like the most reasonable option. And you can really see this in the first game with Saren. 
Uh, right, so Saren, uh, the primary antagonist, is pretty clearly indoctrinated, even from the beginning. Um, and once we get to meeting with him, which uh, isn't until two planets from now, I think, or one or two planets from now, Vermeer, um, that you really start to see the effects of what I'm what I'm talking about. Um, and I think with uh, with Saren, it is really clear that that is what's going on. Oh God, no, that's not good. Good one, Tally. There we go. But yeah, it's a kind of... Um, I mean, you can think of it as a kind of mind control, but it's more like a kind of trickery, right? It's, it's like they're tricking your senses into thinking that the world is a certain way, even though you ought to know that it isn't. Right? So that's, that's kind of the way of thinking about how Reaper indoctrination works. Oh, you. Okay, fine. Why? Why would that? Why would that have hit me? So actually, yeah, considering things in this way, it does make the sort of indoctrination theory of the ending uh, pretty plausible. Uh, because it does explain things in terms of uh, it, it alters your perceptions of things and makes you think that uh, the bad ending is the good ending, if you want to think of it that way. And I think that's a decent way of looking at it. Uh, I do, I am definitely of the view that the destroy ending is the ending of the game. That is the single best option. I'm free. I I suppose I should thank you for releasing me. Is everything all right? Are you hurt? I am fine, or I will be, in time. My name is Shiala. I serve, I served Matriarch Benezia. When she allied herself with Saren, so did I. Benezia foresaw the influence Saren would have. She joined him to guide him down a gentler path. But Saren is compelling. Benezia lost her way. Are you saying Saren can control minds? Benezia underestimated Saren, as I did. We came to believe in his cause and his goals. The strength of his influence is troubling. Benezia sought to turn the river and was swept away. So this is the beginnings of what I was talking about in terms of uh, Saren being indoctrinated, but then also uh, the effects of indoctrination on others, including Benezia, including Siala here. Um, yeah, Wizkid, do you agree? It's the only way to be sure they're dealt with. Um, I put this in a, uh, in a, I put a link in the description of I think the first uh, Mass Effect stream we did to a video by a uh, YouTube channel called Space Doc that examines the ending from kind of this perspective of uh, of destroy being really the only viable option. I'll put it in the in here as well because it's a fantastic video uh, and it really does explain uh, why the ending of Mass Effect Three is actually really good and doesn't get enough credit. As long as the ending is destroy. Asari matriarchs are among the most intelligent and powerful beings in the galaxy. How could one fall under Saren's control? Saren has a vessel, an enormous warship unlike anything I've ever seen. He calls it Sovereign. It can dominate the minds of his followers. They become indoctrinated to Saren's will. The process is subtle. It can take days, weeks, but in the end, it is absolute. I was a willing slave when Saren brought me to this world. He needed my biotics to communicate with the Thorian to learn its secrets. 
Saren offered me in trade. I was sacrificed to secure an alliance between Saren and the Thorian. Saren's pretty quick to betray his own people. He was quick to betray the Thorian, too. After he had what he wanted, he ordered the Geth to destroy all evidence of its existence. Saren knows you are searching for the Conduit. He knows you are following his steps. He attacked the Thorian so you could not gain the Cypher. What's the Cypher? And why did Saren need it? The beacon on Eden Prime gave you visions. But the visions are unclear, confusing. They were meant for a Prothean mind. To truly comprehend them, you must think like a Prothean. You must understand their culture, their history, their very existence. The Thorian was here long before the Protheans built this city. It watched and studied them. When they died, it consumed them. They became a part of it. So the Thorian taught Saren to think like a Prothean. How? The Cypher is the very essence of being a Prothean. It cannot be described or explained. It would be like describing color to a creature without eyes. To understand, you must have access to endemic ancestral memory. A viewpoint spanning thousands of Prothean generations. I sensed this ancestral memory, the Cypher, when I melded with the Thorian. Our identities merged, our minds intertwined. Such knowledge cannot be taught. It simply exists. I need that knowledge to stop Saren. There is a way. I can transfer the knowledge from my mind to yours, as I did with Saren. Try to relax, Commander. Slow, deep breaths. Let go of your physical shell. Reach out to grasp the threads that bind us, one to another. Every action sends ripples across the galaxy. Every idea must touch another mind to live. Each emotion must mark another's spirit. We are all connected. Every living being united in a single glorious existence. Open yourself to the universe, Commander. Embrace eternity. I have given you the cipher, just as it was given to Saren. The ancestral memories of the Protheans are part of you now. What was that? Commander Shepard, are you all right? Oops, sorry guys, I was muted for the cutscene and I've been talking and I forgot. Uh, anyway, so, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so anyway, um, let me read your chats really quick. Uh, so WizKids says, sounds like Shepard is activating her crown chakra. Um, yeah, so <laughs> it's really mystical um, in terms of like the Asari bonding thing. I've, I've kind of talked about this a little bit before. Um, but what, uh, what this really reminds me of way too much, uh, I've mentioned this before and briefly as well, is the, um, is the connection to uh, uh, Star Trek Picard. A lot of people have been saying how similar Picard ha is, the overall story, how similar it is to Mass Effect, especially Mass Effect 1, uh, the whole ancient machine intelligence, the ancient machine race, whatever, is set to destroy all organic life, yada, 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 right? There is an ancient uh, uh, vision thing uh, that one of the main characters gets that is a apparently looks like a warning, um, but it's jumbled, it's not clear, and so you need something, you need another mind, 
In Picard's case, you need a Vulcan mind meld. In this case, you need an Asari mind meld, right? Um, in order to understand it properly, and you need it to be, you need to be the right, the right kind of, the right kind of mind. In this, it's you have to, you have to be able to think like a Prothean, right? You need the cipher. In Picard, you need to be a synthetic or you need to be a synthetic life form, and they do some some nonsense about. Apparently, there's a, a synthetic life form that's capable of doing a Vulcan mind meld with an organic, which is super weird, but whatever. It's very, very similar to all this. Um, so if you haven't seen, if you if you haven't seen Star Trek Picard, I will say I recommend it. It was a good series. I liked it. Um, but one, it's very, very, very close to Mass Effect. I think unintentionally because. Um, the voice actress for Matriarch Benezia is also Diana Troy, and she was in the series in a little cameo in one episode, and they had no hat tips or anything to anything like this. So it seems unlikely to me that there was any real connection, uh, an intentional connection to the series. It seems like it was kind of accidentally borrowed. Elements were accidentally borrowed. Um, but in any case, I do recommend it. So, but uh, you know, keeping in mind the incredible similarities to the plot of Mass Effect, uh, but then also the, um, it's not, it does not feel like Star Trek. It feels like kind of its own space action adventure series, a good one, but um, but it has a very different tone than Star Trek ever has. Um, uh, if you've seen it, it's a little more in tone. It's a little more like uh, Killjoys, another good sci-fi series, but nothing like Trek. Anyway. Moving on. Let's uh, let's see how this goes. I saw something. You should really not bend your head that much. You have been given a great gift, the experience of an entire people. It will take time for your mind to process this information. We should get you back to the ship where you can be monitored. I'm sorry if you have suffered, but there was no other way. You needed the cipher. In time, it will help you understand the vision from the beacon. Is there anything else you can tell me about the Thorian? When the creature enveloped me, I became part of it. But I still don't truly understand it. So alien, so ancient. Its exact age is impossible to know. It measured time differently. 10,000 years of hibernation broken by a few frantic centuries of activity. Its mind was awesome, magnificent. It transcended all classification. And now it is gone. Let's be realistic. It's a distributed life form. It's probably not. Don't tell me you feel sorry for that thing. The Thorian was a unique life form, a sentient being that lived for 50,000 years, maybe more. There is nothing even remotely like it in the known galaxy. I am grateful you saved me from a life of thraldom. Yet I cannot help but feel some sorrow for the loss of such a rare and remarkable creature. What else can you tell me about Saren? There is little I could tell you that you do not already know. He's powerful, he's charismatic, and he is dangerous. Once I followed him, blind to his true nature, but now I see he's leading the galaxy into an age of darkness and suffering. I want to know more about Benezia. Benezia was greatly respected among our people, a powerful biotic, even for an Asari. She was widely known as a teacher of philosophy and religion. She always sought the paths of peace and harmony. She joined with Saren because she hoped to turn him away from his path of destruction. Instead, she became one of his most powerful allies. As I mentioned before, Matriarch Benezia underestimated Saren. Be sure you do not make the same mistake. Tell me more about this ship Saren has. Sovereign is alien. I do not know how it was built or where it comes from. Its design does not match that of any known space-faring species. It dwarfs any vessel in the Citadel or Alliance fleets. Its weapons are devastating. Its defenses virtually impenetrable. With it, Saren believes he is unstoppable. You said Saren uses it to manipulate his followers. The Indoctrination. There is an energy about Sovereign. You feel drawn to the ship. It makes Saren's arguments more persuasive, more compelling. 
spend enough time in Sovereign's presence and you will lose yourself. There is no other way to explain it. So yeah, there you go. That's a, a brief introductory explanation to Reaper indoctrination. Um, so th there you go. It it makes uh, it makes the uh, it makes reasons presented seem more reasonable, seem more plausible. It's a mess. It's messing with your mind. It's messing with your intellect rather than messing with your uh, with your will directly. It's not. It's not forcing you to do anything. It's not even. Uh, it's not a kind of stimulus response kind of thing like the Thorian. Uh, it works differently enough so that it is, uh, it's, it's, well, I mean, it's a little bit more like hypnosis, right? You're, you're, except it's, it's more insidious. It's more invasive. It's like being hypnotized without realizing you're being hypnotized. And yet it goes a little bit further than that because it, it, its effects are apparently irresistible, which that may wind up being a problem. But if it does work in this way, uh, I, I don't see a problem, at least from the outset with, uh, with there being a, um, how do I put it? A uh, a persistent delusion that is induced by some other outside influence. So that that's kind of what we're working with here. I want to know more about you. There is nothing remarkable about me. I was merely one of Matriarch Benezia's disciples. For nearly two centuries, I followed her, learning at her feet. When Benezia revealed her plan to join Saren. She gave her disciples a choice. Only those who were willing had to follow her. Many felt her plan was too dangerous. But I believed in her. I thought she could turn Saren away from his insanity. Instead, we joined him in it. Now that you're free of the Thorian, what are you planning to do next? If you allow it, I would like to stay here with the colonists. They have suffered greatly, and I played a role in their suffering. I would like to make amends. The colonists will need all the help they can get. They'll be happy to have you on their side. Thank you, Commander. May fortune smile upon you. I can't believe it. Jong says we'll have all the money we need to keep this place running. It's because of you, Shepard. Oops. I can't thank you enough. All right. So I think we can uh, we can wrap it up here. Talk to everybody in the colony, at least all the survivors. Um... And then uh, wrap it up because it is getting close to midnight. Thank you so much. Um, now Exogeny will pour the money in. We'll be able to rebuild and then some. Oh yeah, that uh, that Paragon option and the conversation with Jong really did help apparently. Chips are already on their way here with supplies. We've never had funding like this before. Uh, Any luck finding my workstation uh, up no. in the ruins? Sorry, no. Time to get moving. Just keep in mind what I said. Uh, I'm not going back for that. Um... What did John have to say to yourself? I will do what I can to assist the colony in this difficult time. I am ashamed of the damage done to the lives of these people. Farewell, Shiala. Farewell, Commander. I wish you well in your hunt. All right. Anyone else? I think that might be about it. <coughs> Excuse me. Finally, that damn thing is out of my head. I can think without pain. And with the power cells you brought, I can get this place up and running again. Thanks, Commander. Okay. Uh, yeah, I know. Geth shot, or uh, the creepers shot him, I think, or blurped on him, whichever. Anyway, that is a little disappointing, but uh, all right, best we could do. In any case, uh, I think that's all the time we've got. Um, uh, thank you, Kylie. Uh, next one will be tomorrow night, and we will be playing some more Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, we're going to be picking up uh, where we left off and doing some crime. So that'll be a lot of fun. Um, so uh, I'm not exactly sure all what we'll talk about, but uh, it will definitely bring up topics to consider, a lot of ethical things especially. So uh, so anyway, looking forward to it. I had a good night with you guys, and I will 